Today, we are blessed to present one of these insightful lectures entitled Use Our Wisdom on Between Master and Disciples, given in English and Chinese on December 15th, 2019 in Newland Ashram, Taiwan, also known as Formosa. <笑>大家好 也叫紧张了<笑> 这样也可以做<笑> 你說你。my 有没有什么好的事啊<笑> 哎,你们现在才来啊 为什么要在那边念,不在这边念,OK,好了,念了,念了,It's oh. okay, good, it's good, oh, this is very good, if I don't like to show myself, <laughs> yeah, if I'm tired and sleepy, <laughs> just the right size, I think each one of you would find it very convenient, huh? 念了以前读佛经时有读到有位古佛会再来救度众生他的名字是无量光佛有一次我去国父纪念馆听师父讲经师父一出来发全身金色的光我当时哭了觉得我找到了释迦牟尼佛说的那位古佛谢谢师父借着哪
啊 ，very beautiful， 哇 ，OK， 那恭喜，<笑>恭喜长期听经，会多看到古佛。啊、不过我是很摩登啊，啊，有没有看到古在哪里啊？古头就有了，不过没有别的古了。Yes， next one please， 只有一个哈，还有一位。刚才那个是第一个站起来，就是看到古佛那个啊。OK， 恭喜你了啊！第二个有什么事了啊？耶、yeah? ，师傅好。OK， 三年前的一天，呃，师傅坐着太阳到我家，这是我师兄看到的，跟我说师傅来了。第二天，师兄就往生了。走的时候，我看到。有大莲花来接他，谢谢师傅。那不客气，<笑>先生走你这么高兴啊？<笑>口气都一点点都没有什么懊恼呢。<笑>啊，那这样也是对的，他解脱嘛哈、啊？哎，你也是啊啊。<笑>他走了很高兴，你留着很快乐。<笑>修行人真的不敢换啊。<笑> OK， 还有吗？还有别的事吗？呀<笑> ，Yeah，I don't don't look. It's always the same. Yeah, when I come here, it's always crying on one side. But、uh, at home, nothing happens. Nothing. Oh yeah, sometimes it happened like uh, uh, Thursday or Friday. So there were twelve people coming out, and I got a terrible stomach pain. Ah,、uh, yeah, two of the Vietnamese are sick. That's why. Are you getting better already, the Vietnamese? The two sick Vietnamese, are you better? Hmm. If you're sick, you should not come here. You know. Number one, you're uncomfortable. Cannot sit very long because it's not a very luxurious place.、Mm? Not like holiday place. Number two, if you're seriously sick, you might uh, uh, infect other people. That's not fair, huh? They came here to enjoy, to feel better, not to get sickness from you. Even I got it last time. I mean, when I was in France, one of the sisters she she got a flu, and then she passed it on to me as a loving gift. <laughs> I say thank you so much. Yeah, it just in the air, you know. After I told her, then she wore the mask, but she didn't wear before. When you sit together, you know, you touch this and that, and sometimes you you meditate very well, and then you just. <laughs> Other neighbor, you know. <laughs> okay, next one, please. Huh? <laughs> wow, 问题也没有了。真的吗？全部开悟了。Wow. 那我在这里多干什么啊？啊<laughs> ！我是讲给那些无名的人听而已啊！既然那么开悟，我就回家睡觉啊！啊？你什么 ？No No No？ 啊？你控制我生活啊？<笑>我不能走啊<笑> ！OK。Then what do I do? Sit here. Wait for the meal time. A <笑> It's、uh, another four and a half hour then. <laughs> wow, <laughs> how interesting! Is it okay? It is not too high, no? Can you see my beautiful stomach then? <laughs> yeah, since you want to see everything, you want to know everything, you want to hear everything. So it's a pity that it's covered, no? Ah. <laughs>、uh. So really, no question, huh? Wow! So you make me work again today? <laughs> I was thinking, <laughs> I was thinking, if you ask questions, then I can keep talking also, yeah, to answer your innermost quest. Yeah, 
if I keep talking all the time. And sometimes also during my talk, your questions are also being answered, right? Yeah. Just that if you have something in your heart, you should ask. Huh? <laughs> I know why you don't want to ask. Because you're scared. <laughs> Very good. You learn fast. <laughs> yeah. Because if we sit here and listen to nonsense all the time, we're fed up also, you know? Huh? It's okay if Master speaks nonsense, <laughs> but nobody else can. <laughs> Did I ever, ever say any nonsense stuff? A lot, huh? Yeah. Uh, anyway, just for the mind, you know? <laughs> just for the mind, yeah? Otherwise, why? There's no need for language. Just like initiation, no need for language. Whatever we perceive by the soul is, is the best and is the true teaching, yeah? Like when you do Kuan Yin, you see the, you see the voice, you hear the sound. <laughs> no, you, you see the sound and you hear the light. <laughs> then uh, you just uh, automatically became wiser, yeah, more enlightened. It takes too long for my liking, but you see every day, a little bit, a little bit, yeah. <laughs> and then you can call yourself, what, enlightened saint somehow, yeah? Some people boast that they already became Buddha. <laughs> hmm. All right, then I have to read you a story, yeah? Sometimes your questions can inspire me to talk more, okay? And for everyone else. But since you're so scared, then uh, keep quiet. <laughs> Don't be scared. Everyone is different, you know, there's somebody who asks nonsense, then he got what he deserved. But, but if you don't ask nonsense, then you just ask. Huh? The worst is that you just go home, that's all, nothing. <laughs> nothing ever happened to you. <laughs> Not like in the old times, you know, when, when you say some nonsense to the king and he might, you know, Invite your head to go somewhere else, you know, apart from your, far away from your body. But here we are very benevolent, huh? <laughs> What's wrong with going home? You know, I don't see anything wrong. And if you don't ever have to come here again, you save money, man. Huh? <laughs> yeah? Or you feel sorry for the air company or something? Huh? Your husband or your wife will feel very happy. <laughs> oh, he's not going. We save money. He takes me on a holiday to Hawaii or something. Huh? Nice. <laughs> if somebody took me to Hawaii or somewhere now, I feel very happy, happy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going, coming. <laughs> uh, sometimes I also want to escape, like my dog yesterday. Uh, last night, she escapes sometimes. Because in the new place, they did not make the fans very secure. Not enough, and she always can find a little hole somewhere that we overlooked. And we put stones there, you know, big concrete blocks. She somehow still can get away. And there is uh, her little daughter, the skinniest one. She, she ate also, but she just doesn't get fat. I mean, not round like the other dogs. Uh, like even her mother used to be like that, just skinny, skin and bones, you know. You couldn't count the ribs. And now she's plumb, you know, and round and very beautiful. And she still continues that one, that little one. But she's very, very protective. So whenever the mother escapes, she also has to escape with her. I asked her why you had to do that. Huh? It's, it's good enough that says, the mother is stupid. Why do you also become stupid? She said, no, I want to protect her. Because she went out alone, you know, or God knows what. I say, yes, yeah, she should know that. You should tell her not to go, not to follow her. <laughs> uh, that, that girl, she's like a boy, like a tomboy, always jumpy, <laughs> very curious about things, very adventurous, yeah, and very protective. Mm. 
So last night, uh, you know, they came and then they just hung around eating snacks and stuff. And then after they finished, they just went around the garden looking for places to to dig and to go out. We blocked all the holes possible already. She still found a little hole somewhere and then she dug it bigger. And here they didn't put cement underneath the fence. So uh, <laughs> she she can dig because the earth is new, you know, it's soft. So she digs any time. So it made me worry so much I couldn't I couldn't rest, I couldn't meditate. I had to stay next to the gates, you know, wait for them to come back so that I could open the, the a door for them to come in their room or come in my room. Well, last night they went very far, I don't know, three and a half hours long. Normally one hour they come back, but last night was very long. I worry they went out maybe fighting with other dogs, you know, or other animals, stuff like that. Because last, the last one, not last one, but some before last, she injured her eye, you know, inside. Not the lid, but the inside of the eye, and it took several weeks to heal with the con hat, you know, wearing the con, con hat. Like ice cream cone, yeah? yeah. Mm. <laughs> but this one is uncomfortable. Oh, it's hot today, no? Yes. Can we have a little air con, please? Or somebody come fan me like the king, you know, all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Both sides fanning. Yeah. I guess I have to do everything myself, even zip my own dress, uh, wear my own shoes, and it's broken now. It didn't look broken before, it looked new. It's new. When I begin to step right here on the threshold of the hall, immediately it's broken. It's laughing now at me. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know why I have to wear high heels and dress up and, and all this? No? Why? Why? For people outside? <laughs> why? Not for people inside. <laughs> oh. Why? I think it's for the pupils or who they had an affinity with your clothing or huh? Like people look at you, remind them of something. Remind something? Yes. Oh. That they see in their dream or vision. Huh? Oh yeah, yeah. Really? I don't think so. Uh, they rather criticize, you know. What kind of monk who wears like that? Uh, the reason was that is in the contract. So that I have to spend more time and wearing things that I don't really want to wear. <laughs> Make a lot of more time, more inconvenience. You know what I mean? Not like this, so simple. <laughs> yeah, I tried before, but it didn't work. So I have to go back to the contract. Yeah, that's why it is. Even now, that Maya is gone, but the contract is already signed, okay? All the heavens had to be witnesses and everything. So we continue maybe uh, a few more decades, and then <laughs> I will take a very special dress and then finito. You know, the one about one, two meters long and maybe about this wide and square, yeah? And when they close the lid, that's it, you're free. <laughs> no, you're, more, you're free before that. It doesn't work. That's hot. It's, it's red. It's red. Uh, okay. Now it's London. Now it's red. 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 Okay, thank you. Hmm? What happened? Don't hear very well. Yes? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, all of you. I wanted to thank you before I forgot. I want to thank you for working for the world through SMTV or with SMTV, doing hosting, hosting, doing script writing or technical um, assisting and, uh, you know, 
all kind of stuff. And some even help find new channels and yeah, and sustain the channel. That was very good. You're getting there. You're getting there. Pretty cool. Yeah. Getting better now. Grown up. Yeah. But today I was coming out here and uh, there were two guys driving me here. One driver and one just stand by in case the other driver. Thank you too much water or something. <laughs> and so I told them, you know what? Uh, today I told them uh, to ask questions so I don't have to work. Because otherwise I always have to go out <laughs> and read stories. I feel like I'm a kindergarten teacher, no. <laughs> <laughs> they just don't grow up. They like stories and stuff. Actually, all you have to do is very simple. Yeah. There was a former vice president of Taiwan. She came to visit me again just a few days ago, last week. Yeah, I think it was Saturday last week. Yeah, and then uh, she, you know, we talked, and then she told me many things, and I told her things, and, and she said, "We, you know, people should do this, do that, you know, all the." Other organizations, they're planning to build this, build that, you know, like temple stuff. As so oh, we don't build anything anymore. Uh, these things already exist, so we use them. <laughs> because building something big, you know, is uh, disturbing the earth a lot eh? and sacrifice many trees and plants and insects and maybe birds or squirrels, you know, their area. They've been living in there, and you never know when they have their nets or something, and baby is just born or their eggs. And, uh, it's not a very nice thing for them. I don't really like building anything. It costs too much manpower, time, you know, finance, and the earth. You know, it costs costs something to the environment. I, I don't always feel very comfortable building anything. That's why whenever I find a cave or whatever else, simple, I, I like to stay there. I feel happier that way, that I don't disturb anyone at all. But your brother and sister tell me that in, it's the 21st century already. You don't have to live in cave anymore, Master. I say, why? <laughs> I'm a cave woman. Everybody knows that <laughs> since a long time already. I got used to it. <laughs> but there's a there's a cave here. You know, it's it's already served its time. Mm. It's getting dangerous now to stay there. So they took me out. But still, you know, uh, I don't really feel like moving. But <laughs> I don't want everyone to get worried about my safety. So it's sensible to move out, yeah? Twenty-first century. <laughs> we had twenty many centuries, not just twenty-one. Twenty-one is counted since the Lord Jesus Christ only. Before that, we existed long, long, long time. Many civilizations came and went, yeah. Uh, many masters came and went, yeah, either anonymously or recorded. In history, yeah, so many. In the beginning, we came here from like the Brahman heavens. That was the beginning of humankind. We could fly, we had magical power, we could communicate telepathically with our ears. We could see thousands of miles away. 
and then we begin to taste this and that, and then we ate more solid food, and then we became more solid. That's why we cannot fly. And then we even begin to eat raw meat, kill other beings, lesser beings to eat. And then after that, we discovered fire, and then we ate more because it maybe tastes better. And, and then we discovered other plants that combined with the meat and so on and so forth. And then our body became coarser and coarser and you know, heavier and heavier, and our mind also became clouded. Our soul, you know, because a, it's connected with the mind and the body, also feels dragged down. And that's the result of us, <laughs> the way we look, the way we behave right now. And then, because we like to eat more and more, we begin to fight with each other for food, and then we need houses because the body became weaker. The, the, the Im immune system used to be more refined, more holy, more wholesome, became weaker and weaker with each generation, with each day. That passed because we ate too many different things and animals and stuff. And then and then we had to fight with each other for survival. And then we needed governments <laughs> to regulate <laughs> the laws or to make the rules. And then we need the police to keep the rules. And then the ones who don't understand the rules are thrown in prison and get angry, come out and rebel, etc., etc., and the more and more karma all the time. So even now, after initiation, we still have the karma. Even though the maya is gone, the karma is already there. It cannot uh, disentangle from the body, because it's like tearing your flesh to squeeze out the blood, or try to squeeze out the blood out of your flesh, something like that. It would be horribly painful, physically speaking, or even uh, spiritually speaking. It's impossible. You can stretch out, baby. Stretch it out. Oh, I show you how. <laughs> huh? I cannot. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Stretch it out. What is? Yeah. Oh. Nah, I. I give him the key. I forgot. I forgot that they came back, so we locked the house. Can you please give it to him, to the person who? give you the note. Okay. Thank you. Tell him not one key missing, huh? <laughs> Just joking. I can trust them. If they like to take my dress, then I will have excuse not to wear it anymore. It would be nice. <laughs> That's the only valuable thing there. I don't think they want to. <laughs> then they will talk like the sisters. <laughs> Sometimes they come to my house and help me to clean the house, yeah, when I don't have a lot of time. Or when I need the muscle to, to move some furniture. Hmm? And then they wear the gown, you know, and the, the gloves and all that, and the hats. <laughs> uh, you know, those are kind of hats for cooking, so the hair doesn't go out. And they, they also wear special shoes to come in the house so I don't have to clean again. And they wear gloves so I don't have to smell their sweat. There's two different people, they smell different, you know. One person is already unbearable. Men, they smell stronger than women. I don't know why. What's wrong? What did you eat? What did you guys eat? Huh? Yeah. Huh? They sweat? You don't sweat? Ah. Sure, they work harder than women. Red winner and stuff, huh? Yeah, and then we criticize, like, like I did last week. I say, oh, the smell put me off. <laughs> but they have to sweat. They, they work harder, you know? Yeah. And don't ever try to smell their socks. <laughs> ah. You will faint. 
Normally they come my house, they wear uh, slippers to come in, but their socks still on. And then, even if they work right at the entrance, I still smell it. I said, did you change your socks today? He said, oh, sorry, Master, no time, urgent to come here. Can you smell from there, Master? I said, of course! <laughs> Why do you think I live alone? <laughs> Single, <laughs> still. <laughs> yeah. They sweat so easily, huh? Mm. So they, they wear the gown, you know, like overalls. So they don't lean on my sofa or whatever, you know, uh, their socks <laughs> might touch something. <laughs> Sometimes they forgot to bring their slippers, so I say, okay, never mind, just go in with socks, don't go in with the dirty shoes. And uh, then it's okay because the shoes sometimes muddy, you know. I go to public toilet and stuff like that. So, so they went in with the socks. Three days after, I still smell it. <laughs> if I have no time to clean, then I smell it for three days. It's not so strong, you know, but it's there. And I know it is because it's not mine. <laughs> okay. Anyway, uh, last week I was just uh, being a little bit a uh, uh, bad, bad joker. Forgive me, yeah, guys, I do love you. Mm. Love and like are different things, okay? So I cannot just love and like at the same time. <laughs> or sometimes I can like but not love. <laughs> it's very difficult to love and like together. Yeah, I don't know why. Don't ask me, huh? Okay? <laughs> That's why I was wondering how you stay married so long, you know? I really admire you so much. I really, truly mean it. I really mean it, huh? <laughs> yeah, possible. And not, not, not just those who stay because uh, children, huh? Or because uh, together banking account or a mortgage, the same house. Or it's, uh, it's a pity to leave this fancy car, you know? It's not that, but those who love, really, love, 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 love so much. <laughs> yeah. And then one time, uh, one of your brothers asked me, uh, Master, you still feel like you love somebody? I said, what? I don't know what love is, really. I really don't. The way he asked about love, I don't know that love anymore. I love everyone, everything, every being. I don't know that kind of love. That's very narrow, actually. The moment you say you love somebody and he loves you back, it begins a creeping in this possessiveness and anxiety, jealousy. Ah, oh, does he really love me? He loves me. He loves me not. She loves me. She loves me not. Yeah, don't know. Not sure. Why is he coming home late today? He loves me. He goes out. He goes with somebody. He doesn't go with somebody. He sits somewhere in a coffee alone. Maybe because we fight last night. Oh man. Okay. No end. <laughs> yeah? Ah, there is no end to all this story. It begins like that, even if you don't want to. Even the most loving couple, sometimes it's creeping in your mind, you know, just, just to make trouble. The mind makes trouble. And woe to the man if he just side looks at another woman. <laughs> even if she's not pretty, you think she is. That is a problem. And even if Another man doesn't look all that attractive, but the husband thinks, Oh, why is she looking at him? Or oh, she just pretends to look in that direction, but she's looking at him, isn't she? Yeah. And you think he, he is attractive. In your mind, he is. Maybe she doesn't care. Yeah. <laughs> Many times I talk to people outside, you know, the married couples. They really value each other, you know. Not that everybody just goes out and uh, always uh, sidetrack and looking at other woman or desiring the other person. It's not really like that. They really like and love each other, and it's a happy thing. It's a very good thing. In this life, it's very lonely. Yeah. If you don't have some good neighbors with you or friends who come and go in your house, you will feel very lonely to stay in a flat all by yourself. 
And then you come out, and then somebody begins talking to you, and then you feel like, oh, this person may be my company, you know, my life companions, stuff like that. The mind keeps saying things. Yeah. So I know why Sunday you come here. <laughs> Maybe nobody comes and talks to you. <laughs> nah, no need, right? And now you have a lot of friends. So uh, come back to the story. And after we became heavier and heavier, you know, our minds became duller and duller, and all the senses became more real, you know, more real, and then it began to control us, you know. Yes, like uh, the nose loves to smell something pleasant, the mouth wants to eat something nice. The more you eat, the more you want, and then slowly, slowly we eat a lot, and then we know much less than we did before, and we have less capability than we did before. I mean, real capability. Before, whatever we want, it, we just want it, it will come. And now, <laughs> we can pray and we can work hard for two, three years, then we can get what we want, with mortgage even. Thank you so much. <laughs> and then work hard again to pay interest. And if you lose your job, yeah, yeah, you know. In some countries, you could become homeless, just like that, overnight. And you lose your house, you lose everything, because everything is on loan, or at least half loan, not paid completely. When I was in America, I saw many people, they advertised in the newspaper or something, please come take my house, if you can afford to pay so much or much per month, please come, it's free for you, just continue to pay, I cannot afford. Is that true, right, brothers? Yeah, I feel so sour in my heart. My God, they work so hard. They pay already halfway or two-thirds already. But if they could not continue, then the bank take over or whomever. I thought, my God, it should not happen like this, especially in America. We, in many countries, have the idea that America is a very rich country, very secure for everyone. But it isn't always like that. When it comes to recession time, they call it, or something like that, people just lose jobs and they don't have enough money even to, to take care of any other things except for themselves. And the whole family sometimes moves to some charitable shelter or something. And once you lost a job, once you lost your house, you have no address. You cannot go find a job if you don't have a a mail-in address. One thing leads to another. I thought, my God, it should not happen like this, especially in America. We, in many countries, have the idea that America is a very rich country, very secure for everyone, but it isn't always like that. When it comes to recession time, they call it, or something like that, people just lose jobs and, and they don't have enough money even to, to take care of any other things except for themselves. And the whole family sometimes moves to some charitable uh, shelter or something. And once you lost a job, once you lost your house, you have no address. You cannot go find a job if you don't have a, a mail-in address. One thing leads to another. Many educated people, high-paid persons before, succumb to this kind of, of situation and they end up becoming homeless or staying in some shelter temporarily. And nowadays, uh, some, mm, some organizations, they, they lend the addresses <laughs> to
to give the homeless people a kind of stable place so that they can apply for jobs. When you go to interview, uh, the company, the how say staff, manager that interviews you, he doesn't immediately say, hey, we hire you now or tomorrow. We call you. Yeah. So you need a phone. Uh, and or we will mail you. Yeah, etc., etc. Or, or they will ask more questions and then you have to write to them and then they will answer you through whatever address. If you don't have address, that means you are nobody in the society anymore, no matter what. And then that's the situation. Everything is sometimes so sad in this world, you know, so sad. So yesterday, I saw a, a little moth, you know, very little one, and she died because of too much wind one time, and then she just died on the floor. And I thought she was still alive. I was trying to get the glass and the paper to scoop her in, but she didn't move. So I put her on the tree, and she didn't move again. So I said, oh, my, you're dead, huh? So sorry about that. Your life is so short, and then you had to die just like that already. I felt it was so unfair for this moth, you know. I felt so sorry for her. It just touched me somehow in my heart that everything in this world is so cruel, so unkind, you know. So the little helpless and harmless and fragile little moth like that, she couldn't even enjoy her short life in peace. And that's not to talk about if some other animals don't eat her before even, yeah. And then sometimes uh, if we cook something or eat something, the insects come and then you have to remove them yeah, outside. And I also feel very bad. <laughs> I feel like, my God, even just to eat something, you have to fight with other beings, you know? Not to talk about many insects die or get injured during the farming yeah, season, or off-season, on-season, after, before season. Ah, yeah. If we don't think about it, we can survive. If we do, we don't want to live anymore. Such a, such a hassle to keep this body going, yeah? Even simple already. Not, not like very uh, luxurious or anything, yeah. Oh, so every day you have to pray and thank all beings for the meal you eat. Thank God, of course, above all, and thank all involved in the meal you eat. Thank the farmer who toil, you know, rain and shine to take care of the vegetables or the food that comes onto your table. Thank the, you know, other people, the transport company, the drivers, yeah, the ones who harvested it, the ones who wash it, made it ready and put it in a nice container or bag for you to take home, yeah. Everything in this world, we own someone. We use anything at all, we own everyone even tiny bees, insects, they're doing their job so that we can just stretch it out more. Yeah, uh, just, yeah, and that side, yeah, yeah, that's the east side. <laughs> South side, north side, who cares? Yeah, do it, yeah. You, you don't have a chair? Are you leaning on the chair? Yes? No, you don't have? Just a cushion. You should have a little chair. Anybody have a chair? Can somebody go get me a chair for him, please? He's not talking. I am talking. Can somebody go out and get me a chair from the shop, please? Chair for him? Huh? I have a chair. Uh, never mind. Never mind. You sit because when you go out now, you miss me. <laughs> I think. Thank you, Master. <laughs> I'm not sure, but no. Oh, okay, okay. That one. Yeah, it's more comfy. You are a driver, aren't you? Not, not, okay. That's oh, so fine, fine. Look at that. How much love is going on. Thank you, Master. Be careful, yeah? Okay. Thank you, Master. That's good. 
All right, enough already. How, how many chairs uh, for him also good? Anybody else who needs chair? <laughs> we empty the shop outside for you. <laughs> yes, it, you drive it, right? Yes. Yeah, so you drive all day, sit all day already. Now come here, have to sit again. Ah, oh, so sorry. C'est la vie, you know, it's not fair anything. I told you already, just before. <laughs> Nothing is fair in this world, huh? Okay. Huh? And don't think he eats a lot so he grows so big. No, not necessarily. It's a thyroid gland sometimes. Yeah, when it functions slow, then people get chubby. Yeah. Or the, the too much fat they put in their hamburger, you know, even vegan burgers. Because they like it. <laughs> and some people just get fat without any reason. And some people eat so much, I'm telling you, and it's like a toothpick. It's true, right? You know, right? Huh? Yes. So don't criticize anybody. It's just the way it is. Karma. <laughs> Happy Buddha. Happy Buddha, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You look like Matreya. <laughs> You need a little bit bigger, though, to compare with him. That's a, just a disciple size. <laughs> he is like this. The, the, the stomach, uh, you know, protruding out. <laughs> so we created so many different karma, you know, like that. And even nowadays, um, after initiation, still have. You know, each one has different karma. And you must meditate well in order to minimize a little bit, okay? So Master can help you. Because if Master gives you too much power, you also cannot bear. If you clean the karma too quickly, you will have problems or you will die. Huh? Yeah. Uh, different people create different karma. You know, I have people who help me, but they create different karma also. Or the people who come here with pure intentions to meditate and to see the Master and to, you know, elevate themselves. But they also bring different karma, you know. Like like a few days ago, I suddenly had such a terrible pain. So I <laughs> I uh, checked and I knew who was coming, and there were two people who were very sick, two Vietnamese people. I don't want to say who, okay? Never mind, you know, okay? Uh, if you are very sick, you should not come here. Not come here with the intention of wanting Master to cure you. They are medicines, okay? They are doctors. Hmm? We should not always uh, rely on Master for everything. My body is also very fragile, like yours, okay? Maybe even more fragile sometimes. Uh, I don't look it, but, <laughs> you know, the body is a body, you understand? And I work so hard, sometimes I really abuse this vehicle. <laughs> Just like if you drive your, your car and you don't really take care of it all the time, you don't change the oil, you don't have time, Oh, you you give a cheap uh, <laughs> a cheap uh, gasoline, uh, make him run, uh, poor car, you know, etc., etc., and you forget to pump in the air, <laughs> or you don't have time, yeah. If you're very busy, and the car is also, you know, feeling <laughs> its age, yeah. Or when the car is older, it doesn't go as fast as before, or you shouldn't go as fast as before, and many uh, parts of the car have to be constantly maintained or changed. Yeah, yeah, the body is the same. But we neglect our body too badly, you know, I myself, truly. But I truly sometimes have no choice with the inside work pressing and the outside work pressing. And the dogs, they don't understand anything about my job, about my inside, outside. They say, they know you work day and night for the world. Yeah, they told me that, but they don't care. Oh, we come see, see, sassy, one pet, one hugs, <laughs> uh, one snacks, and uh, wants to stick around, don't want to go to their room. They fought tooth and nail with my new assistant just to stay behind. They don't want to go out of the gate. Fight with them, you know. Oh, really? So terrible. I feel so sorry for the new assistants. They harass them no end. I say, go now. And then, okay, 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 I'm going. <laughs> and then looking back, I'm really going? I say, you going? <laughs> oh, they play their game, you know, dogs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
tell you. And then escape and all that stuff, you know. Only the mother, she is the wild one, because she was born in the wild and lived in the wild before she saw me. Before, nobody could ever touch her. Nobody could go near her, even. Only after I got her babies, then she came knocking at my door. And a couple of, so a week or ten days, I, I already could carry her on my shoulder, <laughs> walking around, you know, showing off to the neighbors. I got her, she got her. <laughs> because she, she became like a puppy, you know. She's also one puppy. Tough life, you know. She was so young and got pregnant because of wild dogs, you know. And she became also like one of the puppies. She's the most sissy, sassy of all. I said, what? You're a mom, you know that? This is your baby stuff, not yours. Well, she doesn't care. She doesn't really realize that uh, she's older than the baby. I uh, just one, one year plus older. It doesn't make any difference to her. Yeah. Afterwards, she behaved just like a puppy, just because she was so used to living in the open. So now and then she tried to escape, and she's so good at escaping. Before, she could jump, you know, uh, there are fans like that, you know, the kind of fans. She put her four paws on it, climbs them up, 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 two seconds, she's out. No, not even two seconds, in one second, she's so fast, so fast. That's why I could never catch her before. I didn't want her to go out, not because I'm controlling, but I don't want her to go out eating garbage and then bring back, you know, bad germs and something for the little babies before I scolded her a lot. But she tried, and then she opened windows, and she bit the whole wall to try to get out. She bit the whole wall down, you know. I don't know how she didn't die, because it's uh, painted. Even if you breathe in, or um, you taste a little bit, you know, you would feel some effect, no, nothing. This girl, she's invisible. <laughs> <laughs> the whole body was all white, the nose, the, all the hairs are all white. <laughs> And the ear, hair is all white, but the tongue white too. Nothing happened to her. I was worried sick, but she, nothing happened. The moment I'm not careful, she runs. <laughs> if I open the door, she runs under our legs and out in, not in 60 seconds, you know, not even six seconds, uh, six nanoseconds. She's so fast, so fast, because she's so skinny before. Now she is still more chubby, but still skinny, so I escape so quick. She climbs so fast and jumps out. And sometimes she sees some tree nearby, you know, and she uses the tree. Yeah. Climbs up the tree and then near the fence and she up, comes out like that. Oh my God, this girl, incredible. And she uses magic to break the, 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 even the iron chain just to get out. A cat before. And because she she likes to oh, climb. Oh, maybe maybe she was a cat. No, she, she's like a cat, a but she climbs so fast. She is used to the wildlife, you know. She's street smart, so smart. Before when we were in Thailand, we fence everywhere, but we could never catch her. I hire everybody, <laughs> hire everybody, and then one time, uh, luckily, we use a big like uh, these uh, the big uh, basket that you use for for leaves in the garden. And then one Korean guy looked like he have affinity with her. He came in, you know, he came in and just caught her like that. But uh, two days later, she's was gone it? again, <laughs> etc., etc. I don't know, I don't talk about her. And last night, oh, I was so tired looking for her. Everybody was looking. And to everybody else, I say, oh, you go home and sleep. I, I wait for her. She will come back. I just don't know when. So she'll come back. They, they always come back. She was a cat. No, she, she's like a cat. But she climbs so fast. She's used to the wildlife, you know. She's street smart, so smart. Before, when we were in Thailand, we fence everywhere, but we could never catch her. I hire everybody. <laughs> hire everybody. And then one time, uh, luckily, we used the big uh, basket that you use for, for leaves in the garden. 
And then one Korean guy looked like he had affinity with her. He came in, you know, he came in and just caught her like that. But uh, two days later, she was gone again. <laughs> Etc. Etc. I don't know. I don't talk about her. And last night, oh, I was so tired looking for her. Everybody was looking, and to everybody else, I say, "Oh, you go home, sleep. I wait for her. She will come back. I just don't know when." And so she'll come back. They they always come back. They know where. I'm just worried in between something, you know, might happen. And that little skinny uh, daughter of her, she she doesn't have that much energy. She's so skinny, no matter what she eat, I never see her stomach come out. I don't know, it gone immediately or something, dissipated. So I worry she might be exhausted, you know, in the middle of the street somewhere or in, in the forest here, it's very big. So we, we would not even know where to find her. I'm worried about her and will not worry about the mother, she's too clever. But I'm worried about the little one, you know, that have to trot along with her to protect her. My God. I say, you protect her? Look at you, huh? Look at her, huh? huh? She's so chubby and good. In fact, you don't eat much, and you're so skinny like this. How you protect her? <laughs> she said, don't ever go out again. I say many times. Huh? She said, okay, okay, and then huh, she forgot. You know, dogs, they forget in 10 minutes. That's what I say. <laughs> just like I gave her something to eat, and then she came back again uh, a while later. I said, you, I just gave you something, remember? No? No? <laughs> yeah, maybe they pretend. Yeah. Uh, we have to really meditate well in order to help the world, to help others. Otherwise, we could not even cover our own expenses. You understand? The contamination of the world, our own karma, our uh, relatives and friends' karma, the food we eat, karma, everything in this world costs us something. Yeah, I have many people. You know that. Then you would think I have a lot, a lot of hard people, you know, uh, hanging around me, <laughs> ready to uh, pick out my little pimple for me, <laughs> scratch my back. Yeah, no, I can't afford it really. Because if I keep cleansing their karma every day, then I, I'm exhausted. They have no more time to do other things. Yeah? When it's too close, you know? I'm too sensitive nowadays, more than before. Before I wasn't this sensitive. I immediately sense it, you know? People will bring different things. And another thing is that if somebody keeps helping me too long, they become attached and become more like. Uh, possessive, and begin this game of competition, jealousy, stuff, and I hate all this. <laughs> and even if I don't want to change people, I have to. I have to. I hate changing people, because you have to retrain again and get used to the, you know, different energy, different personality, different, you know, habits and liking and not liking, again and again, huh? Yeah. But whenever I smell this kind of possessiveness, competition, jealousy, I cannot bear, then he or she has to go. Yeah, because the energy becomes conflicting, you know, fractioning. It's no good for me. I'm too sensitive. Sometimes I bear it as long as I can. But it's not always possible. That's why I don't have people living around me. Not nowadays anymore. I used to live with groups of people, and I didn't feel anything much, because at that time I also didn't have a lot of disciples anyway, only some monks and nuns. And yesterday I saw some show that showing something about uh, our earlier time when I was still wearing monks' robes, having a free life, uh, and free of money as well. I mean, nothing. <laughs> free of worry, free of uh, mortgage, free of car insurance. But, but we were very happy, you know. I lived with a group of monks and nuns, and we camp anywhere. We drank anything, and nothing happened to us. And nowadays, I eat nice food and, and just have stomach aches sometimes, or headache, because maybe the cook 
it's not good that day, not in a good mood that day, or somebody looked at the food before, or wishy washy something. You understand? Or some people don't have good karma, not clean enough to cook that food. Yeah. So many times I have to leave many foods, return it, because I cannot eat that. It looks the same like yesterday or the day before, uh, last month, same food, nah, same vegetable, but I cannot eat it. Even sometimes congee, I cannot eat it, depends on who cooks it, or if they cook it from the leftover rice or not, then I cannot. If I eat it, I will have problems. You know, not just stomach ache, sometimes cannot meditate well, restlessness and all kind of stuff. So karma is a very unpleasant thing, yeah. And the, the people around us, sometimes they help us, but they also bring all their own uh, trouble. And we have to share it. Yeah. And that we cannot escape, no matter whom. Yes. So even Sekamoni Buddha, I remember, he had to eat their horse feet for three months because of disciples' karma. It's written in the sutra, one of the sutras like that. Yes. But he was tough, eh? He was a man, so it was different, huh? <laughs> yeah. Uh, men's bodies are always stronger than women's. Yes. Uh, of course, it depends on, but generally, it's like that. So one time, Sekamoni Buddha was walking, you know, and then he saw two heaps of bones. One was black, one was white. And he, he asked his people, even the Buddha did not know this. He asked, why is one is black and one white? So one of the disciples say, eh, because the white bones belong to men, and the black bones belong to the woman. After they die, their bones blacken, you know, I mean, they probably rotted quicker, yes, because they were weaker, yeah, because maybe every month they lost some blood, and they give birth to children and all that, it weaken their bodies, weaken their bones, yeah, and hardship and all that. So uh, the Buddha cried. After Buddha heard that, he cried. Or maybe he didn't ask. He knew it, right? Oh, it doesn't matter if he asked or not, I might be wrong there. But then he knelt down in front of the black bones, a black heap of bones, and bowed to it very respectfully, reverently. And all the disciples said, Master, you are a teacher of humans and heavenly beings. Why are you prostrating in front of the rotten, dry bones? And the Buddha said, you don't know. Those bones could be from one or two of my mothers, yeah, for many lifetimes or this lifetime, because of the hardship that the mother has to go through, through, you know, daily work, uh, and then bearing children and losing blood every month. That's why their bones became blackened like this. And he felt so sorry, so sorry. So very, very sorry and very compassionate for all the women in the world. He said, I just pay respect and thank the mothers. Yes. I feel like I want to cry myself. Yeah, we take many things for granted. But truly, in this world, we owe a big debt to everyone that exists now and before us. So if we do anything good, uh, the vice president, see, two times vice president, uh, former, came to visit me again, and last week, and she, she told me, oh, you, uh, you do a lot of uh, uh, meritorious deeds. 
you are so compassionate and all that. I said, no, 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 ma'am. I, I feel like in this world, I myself own a lot of debt. Everywhere you worked in order for me to grow up, yeah? To have food to eat, have clothes to wear, to have opportunity to study, to be literate, and to be able to understand many things. And monks and nuns, they're passing down the Buddha's teaching, Jesus' teaching, etc., yeah? Something like that. So whatever I do, I feel like I'm just repaying their kindness. And I feel like God has given me this opportunity to repay their kindness, to spread love, that's all. I never feel like I'm doing any favor for anybody. And you should feel the same. I suggest you should. Okay? Yes. We are the doctors, the nurses, so that we have a good birth. Yeah? And we own them to continue to survive with our measles, our chicken pox, or, you know, hmm? no, duck pox, whatever pox. <laughs> yeah? Yeah, if we had no doctors, no medicine, no nurses, we could not have survived until now. Yeah, not to talk about the food we eat, the shoes we wear, the clothes we dress, everything. Actually, the world is so kind to us, given us so much, so much, so much. When I was uh, young, you know, uh, I was maybe twenty-something, no? Oh, I went back to Vietnam one time uh, from England before the nation changed to different policy. Mm, I came out on time, eh? <laughs> otherwise I probably got stuck or maybe gone on the boat or something, or maybe end up in the Philippines right now. Yeah. And then you might come and say, hello, what are you doing here? I said, I had no idea. <laughs> Not that being a master or anything. And then uh, I, when I was in, in Saigon, you know, at that time, Saigon, and there was an old lady from, from somewhere. She came and asked me, could I help her, give her some hundred dong, you know, Vietnamese dollars, because the, the thief took everything from her already. And then I said, how much you need? She says she needs Please. only the money to take the bus to go home. That's all she needs. Please. So I gave her some, and then some extra if she needed Please. some to eat. And she kneeled down and, and, and bowed bow to me, and she was crying. I said, oh no, please, please don't do this, mom. Stand up, please, please. You know, if I am in need, somebody else would give me that. The same. So we just uh, helping each other. Yeah? Yes. And maybe you have helped this world also. I was young, but so wise already. And not wise, I mean, knowing some little things. I said, don't do this. No, no, it's just a little thing. I can afford it, and I'm happy that I can help you, please just go home and take a rest. Yeah. And she was still crying. She said, I'm no beggar. She said, I'm no beggar, child, I'm not. I'm not just stuck here and I keep begging and nobody gave me anything until now. That's why I'm so uh, uh, grateful that you gave me the whole sum even. So I don't have to stand here begging all day or until tomorrow or next day, you never know. If everybody just give a little penny or $10, then I don't know when I can go home. I'm no beggar, she say. I say, I know, I know. She dress well, yeah. So you never know, we can always get into a situation. And some people, just like I say in America, I saw some people who were homeless. They had a home yesterday. They had a fancy car the day before. They had house, they had television, they had everything, yeah? They had a beautiful girlfriend or boyfriend even. Then today they just nobody. Everything can pass, you know? <laughs> Quickly, yeah. So today we are happy, tomorrow. If not, then it's okay. <laughs> then we know, c'est la vie, yeah? That's life. Frank Sinatra is sang a very beautiful song. 
That's life. That's what all the people say. You went up in the sky and got down in May, something like that. But I won't let, won't let that get me down. <laughs> I kick myself up. What? I kick myself. Every time I fell down, I pick myself up <laughs> and go back to begin again, something like that. A very, very nice song. I used to know how, I remember, but now I forgot. You make me forget everything. Everything except just reading you stories, a bedtime or even not bedtime. <laughs> and never enough even. Yeah, Mealtime, you don't want to go to eat. Yeah, bedtime, you don't want to go to sleep. Don't I know this somewhere in my house? My dog. Yeah, you're right. How you know everything? Ah, she knows everything. <laughs> yeah, they fight, you know? They fight with the, the, the assistant. They want to take them to eat only. It's a meal time and go out, you know, to do their small business. Oh, fighting. No, 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 no. Oh, 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 oh. And then, whoa, whoa, the whole body was really <laughs> fighting. And then go run under my legs to take refuge. I said, oh, you went to a wrong place, baby. Now you go. <laughs> I have to get hold of her for him, for the attendant to, to put the harness on, on her. Oh, man, the fight really tooth and nail truly and run away, you know, run to the other corner. <laughs> In the morning, it's a drama <laughs> to get them out of my house or my whatever, cave or whatever, don't care what. Just don't want to go. And then after they left, want to go out. <laughs> yeah. Ask me, take them out. Joking, you know? They think I have nothing to do but dogs. Nobody else but dogs. Nothing to do but take care of dogs. God. And then talk like they understand me, everything. Oh, Master, you work very hard, day and night, for everybody, for the animals. Yeah, thank you and all that. Yeah, but work for us, huh? work for me, work for the dogs. It's better. <laughs> Don't stress yourself. Take a walk uh, with us. What for are you reading all this stuff? It's so boring. Paperwork, why? Take a walk with us. Fresh air, running, you know, climb trees or whatnot, yeah? Go drink the water in the lake, even though it looks dirty, but never mind. It's cool. <laughs> it's free. In the morning, it's a drama <laughs> to get them out of my house or my whatever, cave or whatever, don't care what. Just don't want to go. And then after they left, want to go out. <laughs> yeah. Ask me, take them out. Joking, you know? They think I have nothing to do but dogs. Nobody else but dogs. Nothing to do but take care of... Dogs. Dogs. God. And then talk like they understand me, everything. Oh, Master, you work very hard, day and night, for everybody, for the animals. Yeah, thank you and all that. Yeah, but work for us, huh? work for me, work for the dogs. It's better. <laughs> Don't stress yourself. Take a walk with us. What for are you reading all this stuff? It's so boring. Paperwork, why? Take a walk with us. Fresh air, running, you know, climb trees or whatnot, yeah? <laughs> Go drink the water in the lake, even though it looks dirty, but never mind. It's cool. <laughs> it's free. <laughs> I say I wish I could, really. I apologize to them and say I'm not really a good uh, dog caretaker. Yeah, I don't have enough time to walk you out and walk with you. I just work here, and then now and then you come nudging, and then I pat pat and give you some snacks, and clean your mouth, clean the floor. And I said, I'm so sorry, I really am sorry. But I told them there are worse situations for dogs. So for that, I can forgive myself, and you please forgive me. 
they understand all that, but it's the same. Same drama all the time. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so you see, a uh, long time ago I told you about the kings, you know, we should not envy the kings or the presidents and prime ministers, whoever is in a high position, in the public eye, it's not easy to behave, yeah? People most, mostly would criticize you from jealousy or just from too much expectation, yeah? I don't think that that person, the president, is also just a man. The prime minister is also just an elder woman. You know, she has also her limit, etc., etc., especially if they eat meat and drink then their body is not even as capable. Because if they, they are the head of the state, then they have to work with many people, yeah? They have no selection of who comes to work with them. And these helpers sometimes can bring them down. Yeah, you know, many examples like America, yeah? Even good presidents can be brought down by their own helpers because of karma. <laughs> The inescapable karma. Otherwise, do you think any president would like to have an affair with a girl who came to help? Nobody would want that. Huh? Nobody is that stupid. No man would be that stupid. I know you say men are stupid, but no man would be that stupid to be in such a position. And to have an affair, and knowing that our eyes are always on 24-7. It's just inescapable. It corners you. The karma just corners you. And she is there for that only. Not on purpose in the beginning, not intentionally, but the karma arranges so that she came, or he came, just for that purpose. So you have nowhere to run. So ordinary people have an even better life than the head of the state or any famous person, truly. They're always in the eyes of the public. They always have to behave well, even if they don't feel well. Yeah, it's, it's another kind of prison, <laughs> a prison. It's like that. Because everyone who comes brings different karma and affects you affects you. And because you're using them, they volunteer, they help you, you have to bear some of their karma as well. That's a give and take. <laughs> it's fair like that. And you cannot avoid it. Oh, eh, formerly the kings were even worse off, eh? Wow. We had no telephone, no television, no email, no way of communication. So the kings had to rely on oh, thousands of all kinds of people in order to get the war across. And even then, if the feedback it came too slowly, so sometimes somebody's head's already chopped off before the king has enough time to clear the verdict or the innocence of the man or the woman. It happened. It was a joke, I'm not sure if it's a joke or not, but uh, one time a king was playing chess with his, uh, you know, official or something, and then suddenly he needed to go to the bathroom, huh? and then uh, his uh, eunuch asked, so what to do now? He asked his uh, attendant or something to continue playing for him until he came back. So the, the attendant or eunuch asked, uh, Your Majesty, well, what to do with, with this now? And then there, at the same time, another person came in and asked about the decision what to do with one of the prisoners waiting to be chopped up. So at that time, he just in the bathroom and he talked out, he said, just kill. Just kill it. And that's it, that guy's done. And when he came out, oh my God, no, we did not even hear uh, what he had done or anything. And later, you know, the king knew that he's innocent, but it's too late. His head already went somewhere else, you know, away from the body, thing like that, yeah. You know, the chess, yeah? Chess, kill, right? <laughs> when you play chess, yeah, you attack or you kill, let's say you kill the king, you know. 
Shek Shekmat, right? Shekmat. Yeah, something like that. I used to play, I forgot now. <laughs> Couldn't even talk to say the word long time. I think three, four decades ago. Hmm? I played for fun. Yeah, I used to have time to even play chess. Imagine now, what do I do? Huh? <laughs> Just can't play with dogs and don't even have time. And they have to go and, and force me to, to play. <laughs> yeah, the kings are worse than any person on this planet. I think people, people did not understand that. So mostly they criticize. Oh, I'm not reading yet, so don't need this one. Wow. I can open a glasses shop. I glasses shop, huh? I have more at home. <laughs> if I buy one, they say, Oh, Master, like, buy two, <laughs> two more. If I want one banana, I have one big one. Oh, today, really, today they gave me a whole bunch of bananas. Yeah, I haven't finished the, the two they gave me yesterday. I made a mistake. My fault. Mm. One moment, I tell you in a minute. Mm. Don't worry, no secret kept from you. <laughs> Cannot. Okay, it's okay. <laughs> Looks okay. Uh, the day before yesterday, they gave me a couple of bananas. You know, the, the ones that I like. So I ate one and I made a mistake. I, I returned the, the, the food left over, yeah, in the empty container, but I put the banana peels in it. That means Master liked. <laughs> she ate it. And that probably the last one. That's why she threw it in to let us know. Today I got the whole big one. <laughs> this big. Ready, ripe to eat. How can one person eat so fast? <laughs> Even if I want to. <laughs> it's funny. Yeah. In case you want to become a master, you should know all these things, okay? If you don't like bananas, don't ever mention it. <laughs> and if you eat bananas, don't return the pills to the kitchen. Never. <laughs> but you, you get more than you are going for. This is a hundred percent more, no? Oh. I returned one pill only, banana pill, and I got twenty of them in one big, how do you say, a big bunch of it, you know? The whole, the whole thing. <laughs> yeah. All right, huh? So that's the lesson for you, banana lesson. You must remember if you want to be somebody. <laughs> I guess if you're president, also like that. Yeah, if you're a king, it's also like that. If you want something, everybody goes out by like crazy, you know? So you can see in my house, uh, my room may be small, but the shoes are everywhere. I have not even time. I did, I did have time to clean up many of them. You know, throw away many already that I don't need, I don't want. And now more are coming. Yeah. More than what I threw out. Well, it all keeps interest all the time. It's like a bank. <laughs> I'm like a banker. <laughs> one banana peel becomes 20 whole bananas, you know, one bunch. You didn't tell the girls to come? Coming also? Always a girl after? Where are they? I sit there already? Where? Ah, oh, come here. <laughs> come here, otherwise you feel neglected. Yeah, and then your heart complain and then I cannot sleep. Come, come, come. <laughs> I forgot, okay? I have thousand things and my dogs that bother me and my attendants bother me and the trees bother me. They plant it in the wrong place. That's why I'm busy right now, to remove them. They plant it so next to my house, you know? Like, like in Sihu, if there's no door, you cannot get inside the house because everywhere are trees. Trees, it's so next to your window like this. And the trees are so nervous, they cannot grow bigger. Because if they grow bigger, my window <laughs> will be crushed. Here is the same. Plant trees everywhere. My God. They plant so many trees uh, to make a fence, yeah. But when they grow big, 
and I cannot see anymore outside. Only the fence of the trees is next to me, and I don't like that. We have so many trees already, and they pick a place where there, there is no sun at all. The sun runs on the other side of the mountain, so all day long, just as some rays come in to one corner. <laughs> Already no sun, but that's a good feng shui. Okay, I accept anything nowadays. I give in. I surrender because I can never win. I'm one person. And they are a thousand, you know? So many ideas and the same with my shoes. I wish one day I could have more time to sort out the shoes again. Maybe we can sell them, uh, including the glasses, yeah. <laughs> and dresses that I don't need. It's not my taste and I, not my size. This one, this morning, I had to even alter it a little bit. Otherwise, it's, it become like this. Uh, it look like a mushroom. <laughs> yeah, I'm already small and uh, up there big, you know, more. You know, I, I take out the, the padding. Otherwise, I look like a muscle man, huh? <laughs> Macho. <laughs> Macho man. <laughs> not caveman, but muscle man. So now I have to ask them, please remove many of them, because they will grow very tall, you know, and then they will cover everything. I like to see the slope even a little bit, because that place is very small. Both sides are mountain, hem in, and a little slope on both sides. So I like to see that. I don't like everything just square, you know, and sculpted and manicure, grass, and stuff like that. I'm not used to it. I don't really like that. I like natural. And if I keep all these fences <laughs> next to my window, you know, the trees, I will never see them. And it will cover whatever little ray of sun <laughs> that sneaks into my yard. And a little square yard is about this size. Yeah. And they planted trees all over. And in the cave, they planted in front of my cave. The trees, you know, they will grow like this. Yeah, and the trunk will go like this. And they planted right next to the wall of my cave, in front of my door, in front of my window. What's the use of making window when it's going to be all covered up? And it's not enough. They put a crawling plant all over, hanging down already, and they're going to invade everything. Oh, where is their wisdom? My God, Master love trees. Of course, why not bring it all into my kitchen, my living room, my bathroom, my toilet? <laughs> yeah. What's the use of making a deck or a yard? Just plant all trees. Master loves trees. Like the banana <laughs> story. You understand what I'm saying? Uh, now I'm busy having to undo many things. But last time I came here to see you guys, and not you guys, maybe other guys, <laughs> other you guys, eh, my car uh, broke down, you know, on the highway. It happened a second time during my travel, no, third time maybe, yeah. So I thought, okay, I had enough warning already. <laughs> if I continue to travel, maybe my kids will never see me again, uh, you know. Kids, <laughs> white hair, white bird, <laughs> bent back. Yeah. Uh, that's why I have to bear it. But then I have to redo many things. Busy these days a lot. And not settled down yet. Not unpacked all my things yet. These things were already here. We just wheeled the whole, you know, rack, clothes rack in. So I just pick it out and wear it. Yeah. Easy. Yeah. But then again, I still had to fix it. I want to wear another one. It's similar. So I thought, okay, I will prepare the first one. Otherwise, I keep picking, it'll take too long. Yeah. So we truly need to have uh, wisdom. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, everything we do is a nuisance for others. The more we want to help, the more trouble we make. This is the thing about our world, it's like that. We have a lot of good intention people. Truly, it's like that. But good intention is not good enough. We must have wisdom. We must have concentration.
Oh, I think I will forget a lot today. Sorry. Uh, my calendar is is coming out. You stay here and you bless everybody. Huh? <laughs> While I talk. Or oh, you talk and I I just <laughs> sit there. It would be nicer. And uh, so we do really need wisdom, okay? Not because you get initiation and secure and then you don't have to grow up anymore. We do have to. People outside, when you hire them for something the disciple cannot do, the Taiwanese cannot do, they hire outside the people. Oh, they're absolutely polite. They even stay late at night to finish just a roof, glass roof for me. They stay overnight and they stay until late at night to do it. And even then, it was their new year. It's the most important for them, but they stay to do it. I did not ask, but they knew I needed it. I stay on the roof, you know, and then they put the filter sunglass on top for me. And they stayed late. Of course, later I reward them with extra money. I say, this is for your wife, your kids at home. When you get home, you say this for New Year, so they don't complain why you stay late. And they don't doubt that maybe you stay somewhere else. <laughs> this money is the proof. And tell them they can call me. <laughs> call my people here to prove that you were here all this time with all your workers and many other eyewitnesses. <laughs> uh, he said, no problem. You know, we are working. We are not uh, doing anything. I say, you know, I know, but the wife doesn't know. We women are very, very, uh, you know, careful about husbands and men. We never trust 100%. We always reserve something to prove. Yeah, for fun. <laughs> Just to have something to think about. Uh, to be on edge, you know, to be alive. Like, we're still here. Uh, watch us, okay? <laughs> we shop. <laughs> uh, and later I gave much more extra money, not, not just the overtime, you know. They didn't want to take it. They respect me so much, even they're not disciples. Respect so everybody was willing to stay and, and work. Uh, I gave them extra money for overtime and then for New Year, for them, and for extra more for the family. I said, this is for your wife, okay? Tell her why you got this money. Yeah, so that she doesn't complain or she doesn't feel hurt that maybe you treat the work more importantly than your family, even on New Year Eve time. I really appreciate that you stay. I did not expect it, but I really appreciate it so much that tonight I can stay here now. I don't have to stay in the, in the room downstairs. Yeah, I don't like the room. <laughs> it's just an empty roof, yeah, and then they put a tent for me, and I was so happy there. Really, I was reluctant to leave. Only after I discovered the cave, then, then I was not reluctant anymore. I moved immediately. <laughs> I love at first sight. But I was very pleased up there. I was so contented with the tent and the roof and the, uh, empty, empty everywhere. <laughs> Yeah, I was truly happy. During the retreat, I had to stay. I had to bear it until after the retreat. But I had to wear the shoes instead of walking bare feet like in the house that I like. I wore the slippers in case. I didn't touch the, the wood door, the poisonous door. I, I used cloth or something. Or I, I did with the elbow, yeah, with the cloth, you know, already on to avoid in case, yeah? Because I'm sensitive. I'm fragile. I'm small. No? I'm the smallest around here, am I? Not? Yes? Yeah, don't you consider that? Without the high heels, you wouldn't find me at all. Where is Master? <laughs> she disappeared. <laughs> yeah, one time I was in France, uh, SMC Center, yeah? And I always invite uh, the Westerners, because they're very small, and certain Westerners to come to my little hut behind the center. And I put vegan bread and even just vegan butter. They say, oh, yum, yum, yum. I put anything, uh, yum, 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 whatever I gave you, yum, yum. They like it. They kind of was oh, so eager to get just a morsel. And then because it was in my place, I didn't wear high heel. I just wore a similar like this, yeah? If you were there or not, I don't remember. If you don't remember, you were not there. None of you. Huh? Imagine, you were there. You ate my bread? Yes. Okay, see that? One witness. And of course, so I wore a sandal, you know, slippers, yeah? 
and I wear this among the robe. And I was chopping bread for everybody and putting some vegan mayonnaise or whatever I had uh, that they prepare for me in the fridge. I said, bring more bread. Even just bread alone, they take it like gold. Oh my God. I never see it. It's like hungry goats or something. <laughs> That's already eaten dinner, you know? This is extra. But oh, everybody like, oh my God. I thought I could open a shop and sell to disciples. <laughs> and I earn millions in no time, surely. They fight for it, you know? <laughs> kill in outside, you know? And make it, me more famous, yeah? And outsider even kill with them, it must be good. Because a lot of people kill, they don't know, the disciples, they kill for anything, as long as I'm there. <laughs> they just killing, killing, you know? If I open a stinky tofu shop, oh, I'm sure you all will be standing there drooling all day long, huh? Come back again and again, huh? So I was chopping bread, you know, and, and some more people keep coming, you know, because it's a small place, just like a small corridor. And I had a little hut, you know, a, maybe two by two by one and a half, something like that. Those uh, storerooms that are ready-made, you buy and then you put there and you just stay. It's wonderful. I love this kind of arrangement. I never like any big building, bang, bang, boom, boom, cement. I don't feel the difference between a big room and a small room. I'm small, you know, luckily also. I enjoy this kind of quick build, you know, simple. You live inside, you feel, you feel like, okay, you have accomplished something, just the way you like it. And then I chopped up bread and one of your sisters, huh? her husband was there and, and, and she was there and she looked at me head to toe, toe to head again and said, oh, without a high heel, you look so small. <laughs> I said, how can she guess? <laughs> I said, how can you guess? <laughs> Didn't you know this before? I'm glad you noticed now. Probably with your wisdom eye open. <laughs> Even a simple place doesn't mean lousy, sloppy, or shabby. Simple place can be very beautiful, very cute and lovely, and very warm, you know? Cozy, cozy. I like those. I'm also busy. I don't need to clean too big, you know? Yeah. That kind of how you clean in zoop, one second to the maximum, right? Yeah. Very quickly. And you don't need a lot of things, just a, just a tower, huh? Uh, cleaning cloth, I said. You don't need a lot of vacuum cleaner, uh, that one thing less. Yeah, tell me, Nick. You look wise and old. I mean, not all wise. Old, old, okay, yeah. Uh, <laughs> oh, same boat. Don't worry. <laughs> Tell me. I, I had a house uh, uh, with a wooden wooden uh, floor, mm. and it was uh, very, very old, but it was still new. Mm. And everybody would come in and say, "Why don't you put that? You know, the the shellac, uh, all the shiny thing." The, the, ah, the, and the I said, polish no, no, in I, it, right? I like like that. Mm. I will go with the vacuum cleaner, clean up, and I love it. But everybody else wanted yeah, that shiny thing, not me. They have nothing else to do. No. Yeah. 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 <laughs> just like if you're just sniffing a little bit, ten, ten people come up and tell you, take this, take that. Go, that doctor is good. That doctor, no, no. I, I know something, home remedy, take this. And then they give you 10,000 medicines <laughs> of, out of love. Yeah. Uh, some people say, oh, why don't you tear it down and build a new one? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. No, I like this. I like They told me like that <laughs> with my old farmhouse in Spain. I we don't. are the same, on the same boat. I didn't even live there. I live in a, outside in a small uh, hut I bought myself. It was too small, actually, one, 160 and 190. But I fit. I even had a heater inside, a small television as well, and some hook to hang my clothes. And I bought some small square thing, like and they made it ready, you know, a square box like this, and you have two drawers in it. So I bought uh, about 10 of them and put them together, it became a bed. And I put a mattress or whatever I had on it. And that was wonderful. I had my clothes under my tools, even hammer and air, yeah, hammer and screwdriver, all kind of stuff. You have no idea. Yeah, I had all, it was organized. <laughs> yes, and then I was very happy, but they say, oh, this house. Any worker came to help me, always advise me something. I said, does that cost me something also? Is that included in the price that you, <laughs> you fixed my pie or not? <laughs> Just a joke, you know, yeah. Anybody who came there and always advised me, tell it now. 
build a modern one. I said, I don't even live in it. <laughs> what for? <laughs> Just leave it there, souvenir. Yeah? And if it becomes ruined, then in Spain we have many ruins everywhere. So it's a joint the club. Yeah. So what for do you take care of the things that you don't need? And they're unnecessary. It's not even obliged, obliged by law. Yeah. But everybody who came. The guy who fixed the road a little bit, you, that house is too old already. I said, it's still little, it's still standing. Yeah. <laughs> you must build a new one. I know a one a builder, very good, very fast, cheap. I said, no need cheap or expensive. I just don't need to. Ah, later I was tired, so I said, okay, okay, I think about it. Maybe if I want, I call you, okay? Huh? Give me your phone number quickly. And then they're happy. Oh, yeah. Call me, huh? Yeah, I'm always available for you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> and sometimes I didn't call them. They call me. Hey, your house? How about, <laughs> how about it now? I said, nothing. It's the same like before. You want to go have a look? Be welcome. <laughs> oh, man. I'm telling you. People don't understand. They busy themselves for nothing. With too much uh, trimming grass or... You know, manicure in uh, plants. Yeah, there are so some manicure plants I'm going to remove also. Uh, just like the fence, you know, the plant they plant around the fence to keep it green or safe or whatever, you know, when they grow thicker together. But I don't want it. If they grow very tall and I don't cut it, then I, it covers my view. If I let people cut it, I don't feel good. I don't want trees to be chopped and cut it truly not necessary. Okay. Huh? We can have aircon again. Yo. I can talk again. Yo. <laughs> Private stuff. Yo. Nowadays, so convenient, huh? Okay. We meditate, huh? And then at 4 o'clock we go eat, huh? And then 5 o'clock we go home, huh? And at 6 o'clock I go do my work, huh? Oh. Hey, is the food okay, guys? Yes. Now and then, huh? Now and then, okay. At home you, you eat better for sure, huh? Don't care, huh? Now and then it's okay. I have to eat that every day, so you cannot complain, you yeah? You eat only once in a while, you know? You come see Master for two days, three days. Even if it's no good, you don't complain, huh? Yes. <laughs> because if you complain, I, I would think I should also. I write a letter, you know. Every day, same food. My God. <laughs> Every day, similar food. <laughs> In, they cook better. More variety. Sometimes they have Spanish food. Sometimes they have vegan curry, you know. Real Indian curry cook vegan samosa, sometimes we have vegan spring rolls, Vietnamese, real, sometimes we have real this, real that, sometimes we have real vegan sandwich, do it yourself, you know. <laughs> you hungry now? <laughs> oh yeah? Oh, I'm very good at describing. <laughs> That's the only thing I'm good at, especially when I don't have them. I do it specially so that they feel bad, that they don't give me anything. <laughs> when I was in Taipei, you know, you know, Taipei is a very good city for, for vegan food. I went to Taipei one time, and for some reason I forgot, you know, of course I go here and there sometimes. Ah, yeah, I know what, I went to the mountain to do a retreat, and then after the retreat, I said, oh, I feel like eating something. I don't feel like going home eating the same stuff yet. So let's go treat ourselves to something. Look in the internet to see where what, okay? Yeah. And then we went, they say nearby, you know? Otherwise we have to 
take too long to drive. Yeah, nearby there's a Vietnamese restaurant. Not not our disciples, not our initiates who made it. Outside people. It was so good, so good. Oh, even just a simple noodle tasted it's so good. And that sandwich they made, you know, Vietnamese bánh mì bì á. Yeah. Oh my God, a long time. I didn't have, you know, a long time. I don't know how many years or decades or centuries since I had this good food. <laughs> oh, so I ate, 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 you know. And one of the drivers, he is specialized in eating. Whatever you put in front of him, no matter how much, he will finish it all for you. <laughs> so I said, wow, we should do this every day, you know. The way he ate made me hungry, eat more, huh? enjoy. And I said, I feel sorry for myself, you know. <laughs> Now we go home and eat the same stuff again, almost the same every day. Because they buy in a chunk, you know, they buy big, so they're cheaper. Mm. So they probably buy 100 like watermelons, so we have to eat that for one month, for example. <laughs> <laughs> cheaper, you know. Yeah, wholesale, wholesale. On, um, you know, 2,000 kilograms of uh, potatoes. Then we have to eat that for another two months. This is cheap, you know. <laughs> yeah. At least it's clean water over there. <laughs> uh, yeah, and they buy big chunk, you know, big boxes of like um, cabbage, yeah? And then we have to demolish it in two, three months, or maybe one month minimum, and, and, and so on and so forth. So I don't even need to have magic power or go to the kitchen to check. I know what's going, what's going to be on my, <laughs> my table tonight. <laughs> So I said, oh, let's go eat something good. So we went and ate that Vietnamese food. So good, so good. Mm. And I said, is there some other, you know, food like this, you know, similar, foreigners? Was, oh, many, Master. We have even Mexican vegan. Oh, to the maximum. <laughs> you know? Uh, maximum uh, uh, tortilla, maximum... Uh, what? Tell me. Uh, Ah, burrito a la maximal, yeah. And then they even have the Italian restaurant and Thai vegan, and Italian vegan, Mexican vegan. I said, wow, <laughs> what am I doing in the new land? These are all my faves, you know, Indian vegan and Mexican. Oh, this is all my faves, all this lifetime, <laughs> years. The problem is, I have been around, you know, I travel a lot before, even during marriage time, so I have tasted all kinds of good food, no? and now stuck here. <laughs> I really feel sorry for myself that day. I say we have to make an excuse to go back to Taipei. You know, one by one, we, <laughs> we make friends <laughs> with all these new people, you know. Because they, the outsider also, they are so very, very friendly, but uh, uh, business friendly. Also, they are happy that we are vegan also. You know, ideal for them. They love the same ideal people, so they serve us, wow, special, everything, so good, so good. Because they know we're vegan. We say we're vegan, so make sure everything vegan. Yeah, we have only vegan here. Yeah, wonderful. No need to worry. The attendant brings food for me every day. Normally, they, they put it out there. And then whenever I feel the time, I come out and get it and bring it to my table. So yesterday, I, I say, I'm sure it's the same again, like yesterday, right? It's the same, more or less, Master. Yeah. Except the potato. Mm. <laughs> it's boiled instead of uh, fry or whatever. Yeah, instead of oh, boil. <laughs> <laughs> boy hole instead of boy chop. <laughs> so I said to him, hey, you think you miss food or not? You know, it's better than here. Right? I said, yeah, yeah, a little bit more variety. I said, if you miss the food, you go, man. I go there to eat, okay? He said, no, master, it's okay. You are here. I am here. <laughs> I won't go just for food. I said, really? Wow, that's a touchy feely. <laughs> oh, good, good, good. <laughs> uh, I said, yeah, of course, if I can eat, you can, right? He said, okay, no problem. He said, oh, for me, no problem. For him, huh? He said, Usho, wait, meaning it doesn't matter, it's equal to him. <laughs> I don't think he tells 100% truth, but it's okay. <laughs> he didn't want to make me feel bad. Huh? 
Ah, I think I should move, move to Taipei, you know. Why should I stay here, huh? I can move all of you also. We rent a hotel or something, you pay, I eat. <laughs> huh? Yeah. <laughs> We are not many, we are about 100 people sometimes. But you can book one whole hotel all year round, yeah? And today we go to Indian, tomorrow we go to Mexican, next day Italian, and the other day Vietnamese, and the other, Korean even, they have Korean, vegan, oh, all kinds. And other days, and then we go, we go where? Thai, vegan, yeah, wow. Yeah, you're right, I'm hungry too now. <laughs> it, it has an effect, I'm telling you. Mm. Yeah, you have you already, no need to make, a, you know, exaggeration. <laughs> We're happy to see you like that already. No need to please us any further. <laughs> yeah. We wish you to develop, but not exaggerate, huh? <laughs> yeah, because then we have to carry you now. <laughs> we have to wheel you in the hall, huh? <laughs> uh, yeah, we have some wheel, wheelchairs, you know. Can do. I wheel my foot because I put it on the tray, and then I put it on the wheeling table. Like, I cannot carry all that, yeah. Actually, uh, they give a lot, you know. The potion is a lot. Just that this is like for public kitchen. <laughs> I sometimes I cannot eat. I return almost the same. I do think of these the Vietnamese and Mexican and Korean and Italian and what not. What else? Thai and Indian. Oh, all kinds of my favorites. My God. The lucky Thai Bay people. Huh? And even then, not all of them are vegetarian or vegan. Shame. Don't you think so? Yes. Shame on you, Thai Bay people. You should be vegan. It's so convenient. I wish I could exchange places with them. Then I do nothing. Don't have to be master. Don't have to sit here drooling about <laughs> all kinds of food. <laughs> of course, they have Chinese vegan restaurants also, huh? Eh? Mm. And to eat outside in the Ordinary restaurant is a treat, I tell you. I don't go to Loving Hood so often, only once every two years, <laughs> maybe. And if I have to. Because if I go there, it's work. It's work to go to Loving Hood restaurant, my own Loving Hood restaurant to eat. I could even get ovary praise, ovary kneel on the floor, and I, making people looking at me like a weird stuff. Why is she make people new? I don't make anybody new. They come, oh, master! <laughs> Just come out of the kitchen, oh, master, and then on the floor. <laughs> I feel sorry for the floor, you know, so. <laughs> so drop like that, you know, so heavy. <laughs> 100 pounds person drops like that, or more even, sometimes 200 pounds. <laughs> Depends, you know, happy Buddhas, happy lady Buddhas, yeah. And, and okay, that's not all. Everybody come and put uh, their head uh, over my soup, on my table, my food is here. Master, bless me! <laughs> Surely my soup won't taste the same. <laughs> now you laugh? Why oh, it takes so long? <laughs> Our translation. And wait until the Korean, the Vietnamese laughing. <laughs> then we finished. <laughs> you finished laughing? Yeah? There are more to come. <laughs> but I forgot. I forgot. <laughs> yeah. They treat you equally, you know? They don't come and make trouble. Some know it, but they just say, you know? <laughs> and then I know. Then I don't say anything. I pretend they don't know, and they pretend they don't know me. <laughs> until I pay, you know? <laughs> After I pay, they say, Ah, where do you live? Uh, are you the... I said, oh, look the same, look similar, right? I said, you are not? <laughs> if I say I am, they don't believe it. You? Really? You? Yourself? Bandran? Yeah. Your very self? I said, yeah, you ask me. 
<laughs> so I have to say the truth. Oh, photograph, please. <laughs> and then the whole restaurant come out. Well, at least they wait until I enjoy my dinner. And don't put their head over my soup or my salad or whatnot. <laughs> Sometimes and they don't know until the end, you know. Somehow they find out. When I come to pay, and then they look close up, you know. Huh? Uh, e <laughs> Funny. I couldn't speak. Just, uh, eh, um, uh. <laughs> well, uh, you are uh, Supreme Master Jing Hai, right? A vegetarian, right? <laughs> First I said, are you vegetarian, right? Yeah, vegan, right? And I said, yes. Ah, yeah, I know. You, Supreme Master Jing Hai, right? Yes or no? <laughs> and then if I... I cannot say no. And I say yes, and they ask again and again and again. Really? It's you? Yourself? Oh, Supreme Master Jing myself. <laughs> <laughs> so I said, to her, tell her. <laughs> I'm embarrassed, man. I cannot just say, here, me. <laughs> Gorilla coming. Oh. Oh. Keep asking ten times, I'm embarrassed, you know? Everybody looking and listening now. The whole restaurant knows. Before, they didn't notice. They keep eating their own noodle, noodle my their own salad. <laughs> and until they all make the big deal and take photo and whatnot, and then the whole restaurant begins. First, I said, are you vegetarian, right? Yeah, vegan, right? And I said, yes. Ah, yeah, I know. You, Supreme Master Jing Hai, right? Yes or no? <laughs> and then if I... I cannot say no. And I say yes, and they ask again and again and again. Really? It's you? <laughs> Yourself? Oh, Supreme Master Jing Hai self? <laughs> <laughs> so I said to her, tell her. <laughs> I'm embarrassed, man. I cannot just say, here, me. <laughs> Gorilla coming. Oh. Oh. Keep asking ten times. I'm embarrassed, you know? Everybody's looking and listening now. The whole restaurant knows. Before, they didn't notice. They keep eating their own noodles, my their own salad. <laughs> and until they all make the big deal and take photos and whatnot, and then the whole restaurant begins. But at least I can escape quickly. I said, oh, sorry, <laughs> uh, we have to go. Huh? Yeah, but not like in our restaurant. From the beginning to the end, I just sit there like, <laughs> like a theater, you know, for people to watch. Mm. And even if the customers did not know, did not notice, the disciples make them. My master here, <laughs> come and look. <laughs> Blessing, you know. <laughs> Oh, blessing. Can I even eat my soup in peace and then blessing maybe later? Oh, how can I sit there and eat? You understand me? I just feel shy, you know? Everybody see if the noodles fall out or not. <laughs> or whether or not it's different when the Supreme Master Sinha eats the salad. Does it stick on her teeth or not? <laughs> Because everybody else has that. Does she? Because she's a Supreme Master, maybe she eats differently. <laughs> and then, that's it. That's it. I can never finish my noodles. Yeah, understand? Because I keep talking, they come and ask questions. I cannot eat. I, I might get strangled <laughs> inside. <laughs> By answering, then the noodles might strangle me inside, you know. Or the joke, you know. <laughs> Sorry, get the fuck. <laughs> Water, please, water. <laughs> oh, man. So, in case you want to be a master, you should be put off by now, all the stories I told you. Normally, if I go, if I eat alone, if they don't make noise, then nobody notice, you know? 
They also talk with their relatives and friends. They enjoy their noodles, eat their salad. They don't look at me because so many customers come in now. Not everybody keeps staring at everybody until they stare at me. And then they make noise. Then invite everybody to come and look at me for, <laughs> for blessing, you know that? Just really poor master, you know, like prisoner, can't go anywhere. I'm so lazy to go out because of that. I don't know where to go. Because mostly I find a normal outside restaurant vegan. But of course I would prefer to make business also for my people, eh? but I can't. I might just well never go because when I go there, I cannot eat anything. So keep talking and answering, you know, uh, because all the customers also come, yeah, and asking and uh, telling me their own opinion about religion, <laughs> and ask my own opinion about religion, which they don't care anyway. <laughs> just, <laughs> just want to talk. Uh, and then they tell me their story, how religious they are, for example, and how. They understand about the Diamond Sutra and uh, uh, Surangama Sutra, for example. <laughs> yeah, they would tell me, you know, they would lecture to me. Yeah, and then I just have to sit there thinking of my soup, but listening, <laughs> but not hearing anything. My mind is too occupied with the soup, but my favorite soup, and it's getting colder and colder by minute. <sighs> So finally, I said, okay, uh, we have to go. <laughs> uh, you pack, uh, pack to go? No, no, sorry, we, we, it's okay. We can eat at home. <laughs> Thank you very much. Go to the restaurant and go home to eat. And not my favorite soup. I don't want to stay longer. Yeah, because that, I'm just kind of feeling shy, you know, feeling uncomfortable with so much attention and being lectured to so many sutras, you understand? And even other religious, you know, also come and tell me things, yeah. Or introduce me to another guru, yeah. That you will learn a lot from him. You don't know, wow, oh, he's really something. <laughs> I'm telling you. I'm not telling lie, you know. You go and have a look. Go try, go try. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't have enough time to try my own guru already. I have to do a lot of work. Nobody thinks I have. No time. Because I go eat at the restaurant. They think I do that every day, you know, uh, enjoying stuff. They don't know I've been meditating for one week long already, or two weeks, and haven't eaten this kind of soup for long, 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 long years. Because not every Vietnamese restaurant cooks the same food that I like. And different people cook differently. Understand? Yeah. So, anyway. <laughs> I give up. Even the normal people, normal restaurants, they will recognize. But at least they don't put their head over my soup and let me eat first sometimes, sometimes. <laughs> so sometimes we just buy it and go in the car and eat, enjoy freedom, <laughs> fresh air. <laughs> it's, it's, it's not too bad, you know? See, all the car passing by and hello. <laughs> hello. <laughs> Because they we park the car on the roadside, eh? and three, and just nosing in the soup, so they will think, you know, be curious a little bit. Hello? So we say, hello? <laughs> hello? <laughs> hello? <laughs> it's fun to eat on the street sometimes. You make a lot of friends. Yeah. Okay. I am thinking to move to Taipei. What do you think? Huh? Can you afford <laughs> How? Can you afford it? Yes? No. It's maybe expensive. Taipei is expensive, you know. And I don't know if any hotel would like to uh, bear you kind of people. Hmm? <laughs> Laughing, clapping, <laughs> crying for no reason, <laughs> sitting all day, <laughs> sleeping all night. Oh no, sitting all night, sleeping all day, you know, don't move or move. <laughs> and go gaga when one person comes in. Oh, master! Oh. <laughs> like that. Yeah, wake up all their customers. Huh? I don't know if any hotel would like to have you. Do you own any hotel in Taipei? Many hotels. I think one initiate, all one. Huh? Yes? I think one initiate. Really? How many rooms? But it's a small one. How many rooms? I'm not sure. How small? 
Where, where is he? Is he here? Is he here? Hotel owner, right hand, Taipei. No, you know? Do you know? Taipei people know. Hmm? You know? Do 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 you know? I say inside we can make many levels, you know, inside a room, because we only sit. We're not doing anything, no activity, so can sit. And then, you know, and another on top, another on top. Or sit on our shoulders, save work. The big guy, you know, sit on the, the bottom. bottom, yeah. And then uh, the smallest guy, skinny like me, sit on top. <laughs> yeah, we... Also practice Kung Fu, no? you get muscle more and more every day. I'm sure you can do that. Look at your tattoo. If you can bear all that, then you can bear us. <laughs> uh, yeah, too many, huh? Some, not enough room. Taipei is small. They have a center also. But I don't think... Taipei is how many people can be able to do it? One day. One day, how many people? One day? Oh my God. Nobody live in Taipei. <laughs> <laughs> has a center for only 1,000 people. You have to put your ear on because sometimes I speak Chinese, sometimes I speak Greek. Yeah? <laughs> okay. 1,000, but for them, it's 1,000. If we come in 1,000, where would they stay? Outside? Huh? <laughs> They rent it, but it's a very nice place. And they have uh, food cooked inside. Very nice. Vegan stinky tofu. <laughs> I ate there only once. But they also have vegan soup, Vietnamese soup, and all kinds of stuff. It's really wonderful. You girls need some new clothes or not? It's a shop outside. Go select what you want, as many as you want, and I sign. Okay? To tell them, put it on master account. It's my shop. <laughs> I heard. I'm not sure. And you guys also, okay? After this, you can go out there shopping. <laughs> Do go on shopping free. Yeah, okay? I'll take you, okay? Yeah, well, maybe we can go now in a while. You can buy what you want. There are long dress or winter also. The cakes, cookies also. Sandwich. I'm not sure how tasty it is. I have not tasted it. But close. If you need more, you can, okay? Some to change, you know, for for wash and wear. Hmm? You guys also, yeah. Okay. Uh, today, I wanted to tell them to tell you guys to come, but I've completely forgot one thing after another, you know, and it's just so busy, busy. I didn't sleep all night, and the night before also, so much disturbance and pain. Yeah. And last night, because of the dogs, I waited for them outside. Next to the gate, you know? Yeah. And then when they came back, oh, thirsty and hungry, they ate. I didn't have any food except some vegan bread. <laughs> Even frozen bread, but it's, it's not hard enough. So I chopped up and they ate like crazy. I said, don't ever go out again. Next time you won't have food. <laughs> I just say that. But they know I'm just joking. Yeah. <laughs> Even I'm not joking, <laughs> they don't care. <laughs> they know nothing will happen to them. I said, how can I love these kind of dogs like you? Huh? How can I? <laughs> and they came, lick my toes, lick my toes, saying sorry. Stuff like that. And then you melt, you know? And then it starts all over again next night. Even last night I was very tired. I said, tonight maybe no dogs. I must have sent them somewhere to sleep in their own room because I was very tired. I wanted to sleep. I really was sleepy already. But then I said, oh no, then they cannot see me on Sunday, you know, all day, and then maybe at night also, because when I come back, maybe I need concentration to work a lot of, uh, uh, how I say, documents were waiting, yeah, because in the morning I didn't do it. I was busy <laughs> with other things, you know. They came back late last night, you know, about three o'clock, huh? 
And then I have to feed them because I knew they were hungry. They've been running for three hours and a half. Can you imagine? And Thursday, so I have to give them water, change water, give food. And then it's already almost day. Yeah, and then I had to go and pick up my clothes, see which one I wear today. And then I had to fix it and etc. etc. Yeah. I didn't sleep at all and then and I thought I could not even come here. I was that tired. But when I'm here, yeah, I'm telling you, the body is a really funny thing. You can really push it. You can really push it. Because sometimes I work very hard, you know. I'm very tired. I want to sleep, but I cannot. Because of the deadline. Yeah, things you cannot say tomorrow. So I just go out, do some <laughs> whatever silly exercise, you know. <laughs> and come back and work again. Or go drink something, eat something. Just take a break, you know. Few minutes, and then it's okay. And this morning, after I took a shower, you know, because I come to see you, I didn't want to smell bad because the whole week I did not have time to shower. Really like that. And then I took a shower. After that, I say, Oh no, 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 <laughs> no, not now, not now, not no, no, no. <laughs> and I slashed some cold water in my face. It's still a no, 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 no. I say, What should I do? Today, I wanted, there are some new Westerners and Asians coming, so I cannot not see them. And then my house is people coming to work. I cannot stay there. Of course I can. I shut a window and door, draw the curtain and just, you know, I could. Uh, but I just say, no, 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 no. And then I, I don't know, I was really tired. On the way here, I was still feeling sleepy. I thought I could come here and just sleep, you know. I thought I might come here and just sleep and let you just look at me. Because <laughs> you say you always want to see me, so here I am, you know, why not? <laughs> but then when I came here, I didn't feel sleepy anymore. Your body is really something. You can push it, you know. long time ago, there was an American a monk. His name was... Uh, Kaplow, huh? Roshi Kaplow. I'm not sure if he's still alive or not. He came to Taipei, Taiwan, to lecture before. And he went to a temple, and I was there, and you know, visited that temple, and I also met him. At that time, I didn't have money. I cleaned the temple, and only 500 NT per month. And you had to buy everything from that. That was in Taiwan, not in America. Huh? In America, I didn't even get anything. <laughs> so. Uh, and I went to another temple, and then I saw him there. Yeah, so I offered him whatever that money I could buy this date. But Taiwanese is green; it's so big. Ah, Tao Tao Zhe, Li Tao Le, Li Zhe Tao Zhe, is it? Ah, yeah. And I bought just a small amount, you know, in the bag. And I went there and offered to the abbot at that temple, and he shared it with uh, Rosi. Kaplow, Roshi is Japanese, mean master, yeah? Yeah, master of Zen, huh? Mm. Meaning he already became a teacher, he can teach Zen already. So, Roshi Kaplow. And he talked in Taipei, yeah? <laughs> Before, one time he came all the way from America, he wrote a book also. He went to Japan and studied Zen there. Uh, I will get to the point soon, okay? You know my calendar, right, by now? <laughs> That makes it more interesting. Otherwise, I just tell you two seconds finished. Nothing else, and no punch line or no waiting. <laughs> And I bought just a small amount you know, in the bag. And I went there and offered to the abbot at that temple. And he shared it with uh, Roshi Kaplow. Roshi is Japanese, mean master, yeah? Yeah, master of Zen, huh? mm. meaning he already became a teacher. He can teach Zen already. So, Roshi Kaplow. And he talked in Taipei, yeah? 
before. One time he came all the way from America. He wrote a book also. He went to Japan and studied Zen there. Uh, I will get to the point soon. Okay? You know my calendar, right, by now? <laughs> that makes it more interesting. Otherwise, I just tell you two seconds, finished. Nothing else, and no punchline, no waiting. <laughs> and then I didn't mean to sneak or anything. I just happened to be outside next to that window, you know, outside of the window with other people, and they were eating inside at the table. And the abbot gave him this green date. You know, you eat it, it's similar to apple, it's crunchy. It's about this, uh, about this big only, yeah? Oh no, some are bigger than about this big, yeah? About like, like this and this big, yeah? And it's crunchy, it tastes very nice. It depends on which one, of course, but mostly it tastes very nice. I like it very much. A long time I haven't seen it, but if I see it, I will save one and show you so you can rule, yeah? <laughs> Only one. <laughs> and the abbot offered my dates, <laughs> the green dates, to Rosie Kaplan and said, oh, this is precious, this is precious. He didn't know it was for me. I did not give it directly. I gave it only, of course, to his disciples, yeah? And they gave it to him. And just by the way, I sat there and saw him giving it to Roshi Kaplan. Oh, this is precious. This is precious. But I don't know why he said that. Maybe he sent something. He was also a very good practitioner, huh? A four level, huh? At that time. I let him go up already. And he said, this is precious. This is precious. He, he offered and introduced that to him. But I wonder why he said that, because this thing in Taiwan is nothing really precious. Yeah. And in season, it's plentiful, and it's pretty cheap, because even I could afford it <laughs> out of my 500 NT per month. How much is that? 500 NT, how much is that? 10? 15? Yeah, 15 dollars. But I had to pay for the bus to go there, you know, because I admire that abbot at that time. I was a nun, a freshman, freshman from precept school, yeah. So I went there and then I accidentally saw him also, uh, Roshi Kaplow. Mm. So they ate it and then it seemed very enjoying. Oh, my heart feels so good, so good. Because they didn't know it was me who gave it even. So they did not know that I was so happy inside because the abbot, uh, I say, He's a big monk, you know? Many people came and he had everything. All the offerings of you know, people all the time. So for him, this little green date was nothing. But he said, oh, this is precious. He keeps saying that while offering it to Roshi Kaplan. Oh, this is precious. This is precious, precious. He really meant it. He's facing. And then they ate and they enjoy so much. And, oh, you know, the silent giver. Just secretly know about that secret. Oh, I love, I never forgot that feeling. It felt so good, you know? It felt so good because I didn't have a lot of money. And this thing for me, I thought this was nothing at all, you know? This, I didn't even directly give it to him because it was nothing, you know? Just like you go out and buy a few grapes or something, huh? Grapes even more, more valuable, you know? So I felt already very embarrassed, you know, that I didn't have much to give. So I gave it to whomever as others. Uh, yeah, <laughs> you know, <laughs> like I didn't even say for whom or anything. I thought they would just uh, put it together in a bunch of orange, apples mixed together for everybody, you know. I did what I, I could, you know. I didn't want to come empty-handed, no? and that's all I could afford. But they sat there and ate it all with appreciation and gusto and love and, and say, precious, precious, repeat it again, again and again. For this monk to say that, he's very famous in Taiwan. He was very famous. He's gone already, gone to heaven already. But for him to say that, and I admired him, you know, he went to my resided temple at that time and lectured. Though I did not understand much, but I saw him as a very dignified monk, a true monk. And the way he looked, you know, oh, I really liked him so much. So I went to visit his temple and brought my little recording machine that I had to record his teachings. <laughs> so that when I came home, I could have it translated for me. <laughs> yeah. 
because I love monks who, who are real, monks and nuns real, and even go out and preach to people. And the way he looked, just like when you look at the picture of Baba of Sawan Singh, you feel something, you feel he is something. Yeah. Not just any other Sikh guru, but he has something. Immediately, the first time I saw, that's how I felt. The photo only, yeah? He was gone then, yeah. So, oh, I feel very good. But that, that's not the end of the story, okay? Remind me before the calendar gets too long. <laughs> so this Roshi Kaplo, he had been studying Zen with true Zen monks in Japan, okay? He also wrote something very funny. American, you know, he asked, why don't you eat uh, beef or eat meat? American. <laughs> I don't know if at that time he was vegetarian or not. Maybe later he was. So the monk in the temple, the Japanese monk, not the abbot, but simple monk, yeah, say, we don't eat meat because we cannot afford it. <laughs> <laughs> so he, really, he thought it was funny in his book. I had it, the book. I don't know how I had it, but it, I don't know where anymore. <laughs> Gone with the wind anyway. I traveled too much. I don't have many things left. So he studied with Zen monks in Japan. Eh? A famous Zen monks, I forgot his master's name. And then he graduated, yeah? But in Japan, sometimes they do retreats, of course, together, yeah? For one week or two weeks. And one time they did it for two weeks. The first time he went there, okay? They were doing it for two weeks. After two weeks, they still make him continue to sit longer. He said, oh, cannot anymore. <laughs> the first time, sit so long already. Then the master, Albert, said to him, you are more capable than what you think. Just sit extra. <laughs> and he did. Yeah. Uh, I want to say that our body is really a marvel, you know. You can push it to the limit. Of course, we don't always want to push. Yeah, we want to enjoy a little nap here and there. Oh my God, life is hard enough. But don't nap too long, huh? Don't say, Master, say that, huh? You nap a lot already. <laughs> Even during meditation, you nap a lot. <laughs> huh? Lucky you're not in a Japanese temple. In Japan, the abbot or the assistant come around with a, such a long, long, very long stick, flat, and they can reach you anywhere. <laughs> like omnipresent, omnipotent, because it's long. You understand? And mostly the temple is not that big, so, you know, even they can sit here, they see you're napping, then they puck. <laughs> yeah, wake you up so rudely. Mm? But it's not that painful. I've been hit <laughs> uh, once, you know, but it's not painful. It just, it's just an embarrassment. You know, they want to emphasize that, hey, you cheated. You are not good practitioner. Ah, uh, uh, sleeping uh, on the job. <laughs> no good. <laughs> Seems like that, yeah. But it doesn't hurt. They don't do it to hurt you, okay? But they have to do it correctly, otherwise it might hurt you in a different way, okay? So it's just on shoulder. Tap one shoulder, two shoulder, that's it. Once, and then you probably won't dare sleep again because it makes noise, and everybody looked at you <laughs> and knows that you're sleeping. You understand? And for Zen monk, there's a pride, a pride to sit straight, non-stop, and saying something like, Moo, or maybe Om, or maybe Who am I, or I am who. I know who I am, well, I, maybe you don't know, so you keep asking yourself. <laughs> koan, you know? Koan, yeah. And they're very diligent. They sit also outside in the night. And then he did it. So he wrote it in his book, yeah. He did not think he could make it. Because how can I? He said, already two weeks. How can I sit another week? For what? How can I? How can I? We're so happy. It's end. We can go out, you know, do what we want. Now the abbot. Make us sit again. So the Abba said, you can do more than you think. Then he really could, yes. Meaning the body is able to withstand more than what we think. We just pre-program ourselves into thinking that, oh, I need this, I need that, I need to sleep. But if we have an interesting movie, sometimes we don't sleep at all, we keep watching, watching, watching. 
But if he's going to do kitchen chore or, you know, cleaning the bathroom, oh, I'm so tired and sleepy. <laughs> yeah, the reason I was sleepy was also because I didn't do what I wanted to do. I wasn't really enjoying preparing my dress, you understand, or cleaning uh, some of the things, or <laughs> etc., etc. Yeah, yeah, I did not really enjoy it. I do it for the job. Hmm? Hmm. Not that I am not willing, it's just that willing and enjoying are different things, yeah? Sometimes you do things that you don't want to do, but you do it willingly, because it's for a good cause. Yeah. So, another story about him is that, yeah, when he first came, Japan is cold in winter, believe me, it snows very high. You can see one of my clips that I walk like this, yeah, with a big hat, flowing hat, flowing frill, yeah, Japan, near the wood cabin where I, I live before. When he first came, it was maybe winter or something, so cold like that. So they gave him these are warm pack, you know, you have it sometimes in here, and told him to put it on his stomach, the tantian, you know, the solar plexus, then it will warm the whole body, so, so he did that. And later they discovered that he's burned, the whole area burned, nasty burned skin. Oh, they treated him but laughed. They said, you idiot, why you put it directly on your skin? We all put it on the top of the cloth and we find it. <laughs> yeah, but he didn't say anything. He continued to meditate like that. Yeah. Some funny story that he told us. <laughs> okay, so that is his story, hmm? the story of Rusi Kaplow. He had students in America afterwards, eh? and this abbot invited him to come because this abbot, also had another temple in New York. He went to Taiwan, New York, Taiwan, New York. He had a green car, eh? That's where I cleaned toilets <laughs> at the beginning. And then was discovered by, you know, the group of people, yeah, of uh, black American people. They were my first disciples in America. <laughs> and later some of the disciples of the abbot also wanted to follow me. I also trusted them. Might as well, I already began, no, why not? <laughs> and afterwards, uh, I left, huh? because so many people came to see me again and again, and, and it began, you know, making smoke. And also, I didn't eat for a long time, for a while, so they began to get curious and ask me, and then blah, 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 and then I tossed him. And then the abbot also got wind of it, hmm? correct? Hmm. Heard about it? Got wind of it? Yeah? Ah. I don't know where I learned that. I didn't even use that before ever. I don't know why I even read this kind of thing. These people don't talk like that often, no. I haven't heard it before. It just comes out. Must be from you, huh? Thank you, huh? Your blessing, huh? <laughs> yeah, sometimes you sit with intelligent people, they rub off on you, huh? Or vice versa, yeah? Or you rub off on them and you become stupid. Yeah, truly. No. If I stay too long with some people who don't speak a lot of English and who are a little bit less than low IQ, then I become also kind of dull and sometimes think long time for one word and talking but don't make good sentences. Then I know it's time to say Yonara for a while, otherwise I become where I don't know where I go, <laughs> become what. So of course then the master knew about it, yeah? And one of the sisters in the temple, she took care of the master, yeah? maybe helping with clothes and something like that. She and her mother. Oh, she was very jealous, you know, because the abbot was very fond of me. And she, well, one time, I, I didn't know much Chinese at that time, but I knew they're fighting about me. Oh, that's the first time I heard the abbot's loud voice and very serious face. Normally, when he thought, he didn't smile a lot, but he had never raised his voice like that. And afterward, I left anyway.
and one of the sisters in the temple, she took care of the master, yeah, maybe helping with clothes and something like that. She and her mother. Oh, she was very jealous, you know, because the abbot was very fond of me. And so one time, I, I didn't know much Chinese at that time, but I knew they were fighting about me. Oh, that's the first time I heard the abbot's loud voice and very serious face. Normally he thought he didn't smile a lot, but he had never raised his voice like that. And afterward, I left anyway. So uh, after he knew about it, that his own people, disciples, came and learned with me, he called me into his uh, small studio that where he saw the disciples, not his own room. Yeah. He was a very ascetic monk. He really practiced. He slept only on the floor. I also. <laughs> I had only one blanket, one blanket, and sit, folded into four square. The leftover blanket from all the disciples before, you know. And I also took their leftover clothes to wear. <laughs> Life was so simple and happy and, oh, no worries, truly. When somebody else already has a house for you, has room for you, you know, you don't pay bills or anything, you can take second-hand clothes to wear as your liberty, and even blankets you don't have to buy, it's already there, you check it, <laughs> then you use it. Yeah, I felt so cool. You know, you don't have responsible feeling. That is the best thing. You feel so free, so free. I worked very hard, eh? Mm. Okay, so they were fighting, you know, one day. So I just pretended I didn't understand much. I did understand some, but not the whole thing, yeah. So he asked me, he called me into the studio room, and he asked me, you were teaching these and that people, right? They came to us for your teaching, right? I say, yes, they came, <laughs> they forced me to. I say, uh, it's a different from what I'm teaching here, right? He taught breathing, you know, yeah. and concentrating, uh, maybe on the nose, or a finger, or, and the eyes open, open uh, one third, yeah? Just look straight, straight in front of you, with the eyes open like this, all the time. Oh, I cheated. I closed because it hurt so. <laughs> Of course, he didn't check, you know, he didn't check who close or not. So he, he was teaching his disciples to meditate and retreat, and we did all the same. I did the same. I never said anything until those days when the black American people came, and then the cat got out of the back. <laughs> so and then he asked me, how come you never taught me? I was surprised he asked, you know. I said, oh, because you never asked. <laughs> and that's it. That's the end of our conversation. Yeah. He should have asked me. You know, I only answer his question. I didn't ask further. Maybe he felt embarrassed or something. For spiritual practice, you should never bring your ego into play. You should be always eager to learn more. If I truly believe or know something better than this quantum method, I would continue. In fact, I did some, but nothing worked very well. You know, other yoga stuff. <laughs> I went and tried different things. Uh, just in case. <laughs> in the beginning, you know. But uh, so that's that. But if I truly know or believe that there is something better, I would go learn right away, even now. But because I know so well already, I know too well inside already, so I'm not going anywhere. That's all. <laughs> I just feel so happy if I have time. <laughs> to do my own stuff, not to go anywhere, learn anything more. You know, like the Buddha say, you are already finished with learning, you're beyond learning. Yeah, in those sutras, I feel that way. <laughs> I feel I'm beyond learning, or behind learning, <laughs> something like that. Okay, guys, go eat, go home. Thank you, Master. Yeah, you're welcome. I try the food. Ah, my God. It took me some time to pick up these shoes to match my petticoat, and then it broken. <sighs> Let me down like that. Because this one is easy, you know, it doesn't have straps or anything. You just slide in and go, huh? And still it let me down. Huh. Shame on you. You were selected. You should feel happy and honored. <laughs> and what did you do? You laugh at me. Look. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
I know why. Huh? It's, it looks new because I don't wear a lot. These years, you know, they bought so many, everybody bought different things. It looks new, but it's too old, or maybe it was a glue well, huh? <laughs> we are laughing too hard, so... <laughs> it's also... Who has soul? <laughs> Shoe has soul. <laughs> laughing. Huh? It has soul, right? <laughs> Chinese don't understand that, huh? I play with words. Okay, thank you very much. Yeah, maybe I can fix it. <laughs> Just glue, you know? Ooh. What is uh, glue all everlasting glue? Uh, super glue, yeah. Super glue. Oh. I cannot do it. Sorry, huh, guys? <laughs> I have to put it on here. Maybe I can see it better. For you, even more difficult to see your toe than I, so don't laugh at me. <laughs> I put in some way or something, sitting too long in computer every day. Not used to it. Yeah? Thank you. Sure. Good, huh? <laughs> Good, you give me shoes, huh? Thank you. <laughs> Getting better all the time, huh? Give me glass, eh? give me shoes, yeah. Huh? Complaining does work. Just one. Bao yen yo xiao, huh? Ching bu lo, ching bu lo, uh. <laughs> I'm just doing with my feeling. I don't even see where it is. Yeah. That's what I call doing without doing, yeah? <laughs> just use your feeling. Is it okay? Huh? No, the men don't understand. Yeah? It's okay, la? Huh? Ah, okay, very good. Okay, la. Okay, la. Go eat and good appetite, huh? And good practice, good practice. I thank all of you again for helping the world by helping SMTV in any way, okay, huh? So what do I do? I have new glasses. Yes. Check it out. Wow, I like both. <laughs> Very fashionable. <laughs> Which one looks better? Huh? That one, first one. This one, huh? Okay, why? Very fashionable? All right, it's good. It's a good maid, huh? White matches your pearls. Oh, my fake pearl, my vegan pearls. <laughs> this one look good? Look very impressive. Okay. Not impressive, huh? Bigger than my face now. No. Huh? This one better. Oh, guys, you do know something about luxury, huh? <laughs> It's a good brand. I don't want to say what people might think I got some commission from them. <laughs> Famous brand, yeah. I was desperate, I need something, and in airport they don't sell cheaper stuff. All in gas station you can find. Mm. This is uh, a little bit big, but it's good, it's uh, fashionable nowadays, they wear big things. Okay, this for me, keep it here, huh? Right, so next time I come I can wear it. Oh, maybe I take it. It's all mine. <laughs> mm. Mine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Not for you. No, 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 no. I forgot what brand it is. I have to look. Maybe. But I'm not telling you, okay? No more secret nowadays. No more. Too many secrets. Ah, wow, no wonder. <laughs> you know everything about luxury and good stuff. I did not know until I bought it. The price told me that it must be, <laughs> must be famous. And I asked, is it famous, Bran? Of course, Master, what do you think? The name you didn't know? I said, no. <laughs> so many names nowadays, famous, huh? Wow, now you look better. <laughs> when you don't see people too close or clearly, <laughs> they all look good <laughs> and feel good. Okay, thank you, friends. Love you guys. Uh, are you sure? Yeah. How can you love me more than I love? <laughs> <laughs> Cannot be possible. Okay, uh, the fruit. Uh, give it to new people. New people? Uh, never had? One? Uh, okay. okay, never mind, never mind. First, 
just a banana. Oh, you going <laughs> risk your life for it? It's too far. Oh, wow. Eh, no, no, there, here. Banana is easier to 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 <laughs> to throw. Wow, <laughs> incredible! Hey, you, wow! Look at that. Should be Funny. a football team. Yeah. Uh, la, la. Give, 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 give. And this one, please. Give, give, give. This one. No. It is a few. Uh, Oh, you know what? Last time the artists were here, uh, they, uh, Mitchell, you know, she introduced the, the song. Oh, I liked it so much. I listened to it many, many times at home. Yeah, whenever. And I was so sleepy already. I still want to listen because it was the only time I could listen. Ah, it was very cool. I listened many times. And one of our brothers is in there also, you know, that guy. I thought it was you and I asked, and it was really you. Cool, huh? <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, let's go there and meet some there. There you go. Oh, very good. Yeah, excellent. We're going now. Something like uh, go big and go something. Can you can you begin? Go big and go big and go big. Not like that. <laughs> <laughs> you have to really sing. Uh, I forgot the go vegan go. go vegan go vegan go go vegan go vegan go yeah yeah <laughs> no meat no dairy no 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 meat no dairy no no huh go vegan go vegan go go vegan go vegan go no meat no dairy no 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 I'm going now yeah I really am going yeah. I'm not joking, okay? I'm going, yeah? You should know, okay? <laughs> yeah, thank you. Yeah, maybe like this, safer. Sometimes when I meditate, things reveal to me, yeah? Or there's a message and I don't even know until later, you know, when I have time to check. Yeah, see you later, guys. Yeah. See you whenever and you enjoy your life, okay? Meditate. Be good. Very simple. Very simple. I told the ex-vice president of your country, I say here we live very simple, because he asked me what we do, okay? I say here we live very simple. Our life is very simple. Inside we get enlightened and wisdom. Outside we help others. That's all. Very simple. Hmm? Inside know yourself, outside help other people. Isn't that simple? Yeah. Not just people, but help others, yeah? Yes, yes. Is it simple, yeah? Yes, yes. Yeah. Inside, get to know yourself. Outside, help others. That's the only simple thing to do, right? No. Complicated. I talk a lot, but it boils down only to that. Inside, get to know ourselves. Outside, help others. Very simple, yeah? Mm. Because you want to know yourself more, so you came here. Huh? Because you want to help others, so you help uh, the homeless, nah? the disaster victims, and SMTV. Yeah. It's a very simple life. Hmm? Even I don't need to teach anymore. Just like that. No? Inside, know yourself. Outside, help others. Help all the beings. Yeah? All the beings. Not just humans, but animals. Yeah, insect. <laughs> 你好,漂亮的帽子。<laughs> I think we really have climate change. Because Taiwan, today I look at the weather, or maybe not today, but I look at the weather forecast for SMTV these few days. 27 degrees, you're joking. We are nearly Christmas already. Huh? Supposed to be very cold. Ah, 
，有几个地方，那个弄那个气候嘛，哎呀，二十几度台北，表示说我们也是差不多了，懂不懂？嗯，哎 ，My God， 开玩笑，呵呵，二十几度，好像夏天一样。你看我穿这种衣服都没冷哎，哎呀，还会觉得好热吗？哎，我走了，我真的要走了。嗯 ，Thank you，Thank you. Thank you. Oh, my car is here already. But I go kitchen. 啊，回去厨房吃饭了。<笑>我跟那个工作人员一起吃饭。我要不是天天了啊，不是每次每次。我认为今天不行的，我认为今天在那边睡着，然后赶快赶快赶快回家又困了，<笑>结果留这么久，还要去吃饭呢。<笑>奇怪，好，啊，呀 ，S S M Celestial Clothes， 家人，自己的家设计吗？有新的电视呢，电视也有一个新的，有出来了，啊，谁转给我看看？啊，没有给我，哦，什么都是同修同修，都把我忘掉了，嗯、哦，啊，哇哦，那么多护法，哇，更好壮观哈、啊，哇，很有印象哦 ，Thank you 啊，多谢大家啊，他们不让我住在那个山洞啊，哇，写好多几封信。恐吓我住里面会怎样怎样，啊，呵呵我也不是想住那边啊，我有新的山洞也不用旧山洞没关系。不过我认为修改一下当纪念嘛，结果他们说好像也修理不成，不好修都太烂了，也不能有人进去，危险呀，因为太旧了，他、啊、随时会会倒啊。Hello。好久不见了啊！还排队，<笑>好久不见了，排队那么厉害，<笑>好像看明星一样，<笑>让我觉得好重要。<笑>谢谢了，他们 ，Thank you， 谢谢。<笑>